So why is Allah saying to him the following ayah? Stay away, ya Muhammad, from idols. You're supposed to be a follower of Jesus, and you're using words like that. Well, and it's not my words. I, 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 it's not my words. It's the words of Allah. Are you embarrassed of Allah? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! This is the moment that you all have been waiting for. For, for, for. We are live! Live, 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 live. You are listening to the live broadcast of your friendly neighbor, Stream Doctor and Christian Apologist. Apologist, Apologist, Apologist. The warrior for Christ! and enemy of Allah and his messenger, 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 messenger. This is your favorite YouTuber. Now, speaking from cave, Hira, 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 Christian, Christian, Christian. Please fasten your seatbelts. Houston, we are ready for takeoff. Oh, 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 oh. We are back, baby. We are live, baby. Let's go. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Hello, guys. I hope everybody is doing okay. Admins, uh, let's see who we have here. TM Crosspulse, Phil Herrera, Ariel Johnson, Apai Franzai. Uh, I'm not sure if there are more at the moment. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Let me scroll back. Sister Tamara in the house. Welcome, dear sister. Uh, I think I've seen Sister Carolina also, but I'm not sure. Anyway, keep all of our admins who are doing always an amazing job in your praise, guys. Taking care of the live chat, providing the reference in the comment section and in the live chat. And also, don't forget uh, our admins. In a couple of hours after the live show, they will provide also the timestamps. So if you miss the live show or you want to really watch the live show, the timestamps will be pinned up in a comment and also you can find them later in the description box to make things for you much easier to understand what the chapters and the scenes during today's live show are all about. Yes, we are live, baby. You heard it correctly. We are live. I see the live chat on my right. Welcome, guys. God bless you. Uh, Zoreta Ortiz, uh, our regulars, uh, also new subscribers who are here. Welcome. Uh, EMB Maxime, Just Janice. Uh, so many people already here. That's amazing, guys. Mark Smith, uh, John Doe, another regular. Welcome. Cogito Ergo, Nasi Goreng. Sorry if I'm butchering the name. Uh, we have also a Muslim, Ahmed Abdullah, who is all over the place. Um, Ahmed Abdullah, I hope you are man enough, more man than your mother Aisha, to call us live on air. So if you are ready, you got it yourself some guts, and you call yourself more man than your mother Aisha, please call me live on air. If you consider yourself to be a man and not a small little boy. I mean, talk is cheap, right? Yeah, your uh, your uh, Ali Dawa and Mo Mojab, all of these cowards, they will never dare to call me because they know what I'm going to do to them. Uh, we have also Arab Christian here, uh, Michael Caruso, all of you, welcome. Again, we do not hate any Muslim guys, as you know. We only pity them. Uh, they are nothing but brainwashed pagans, 
like their prophet who was a pagan who bowed down to idols, who worshipped idols and kissed black stones. We have a very interesting uh, live show today, guys. Very interesting, uh, we can we can say. Again, for the people who do not know me or are here for the very first time, we have many new subscribers every time. My name, again, my name is Rob Christian. I am one of the enemies of Allah and his Rasul. And Muslim scholars, all of them, in the end, have to run from us because when they know that they are dealing with an Arabic-speaking Christian, they will run. They will not dare to call me. Have you asked yourself why these scholars, why these Muslim apologists don't dare to call in? Because they know what will, what will happen to them. Their lies, deception, and taqiyya doesn't work. And actually, guys, I was sitting a couple of minutes ago, I was sitting on Discord, and there are so many deluded, so many brainwashed, not only Muslims, but also Christians, who are getting deceived on the internet by very nice and respectful Muslims, right? Some Christians here in the West, because they think that some Muslims on the internet sound nice, you can take them as friends. But the moment a Muslim army invades a Christian here in the West, let's say, do you think such a respectful, humble Muslim will stand against Islam or is going to join them to attack your country, force jizya on you, and if you don't want to pay jizya, they are allowed to kill you and rape your wives, take them as sex slaves. So, you know, stay, stay deluded, Christians. Christians who don't want to learn, stay deluded. Maybe you like it to be deceived, right? You, li you enjoy it. You know, some Christians, man, they don't learn. Still, in 2021, we are going to join a new year 2022 soon, in a couple of days, and still many Christians have no idea what Islam is, and they have no idea how easy it is for the Christians to deceive them. Anyway, and you know it uh, it hurts to see that, to be honest with you, still. But you know you you will have many uh, deluded uh, people here in the West who don't want to learn. They are too arrogant to learn what the true face of Islam is. All right. When Muhammad was in Mecca, he had no army. He was peaceful, right? He tried to convince the Quraysh, his own family. But when he went to Medina and got himself a huge army, there was no peace. There was only the sword. And that's how Islam spread in the beginning, with the sword. But anyway, that's not uh, the topic of today. My topic of today, guys, my topic of today is the following topic. This is the topic, guys. The Syriac or Aramaic origins. Now, I have done a live show earlier about this topic. And I, I don't like to do this topic, to be honest with you. Let me tell you why, guys, before we start the prayer. I don't like to do it because I rather go to the Islamic sources as they are and spank Muhammad and spank Islam from within the Islamic sources. Because when we talk about such topics... Muslims don't care. They, they only care about what the Muslim sources say. So even if we can show you thousands and thousands of proof that the original Quran was actually in Syriac, Aramaic Syriac, they, they will never accept it. But, you know, we are doing this because some people ask me to do this live show again, provide a reference again to, to learn how actually the Quran came into existence and how we can trace back Syriac, Aramaic origins in the Quran. Muslims won't accept it because, you know, whatever you want to show them, they will never accept. They only accept their Islamic sources. And even when you show them Islamic sources, they will throw those sources under the bus. So in the end, you know, it's all garbage for them. Everything that embarrasses their prophet, their fraud, fake prophet, the most obvious fake prophet in, in history, they won't accept it. So what about what we are going to show you today? But maybe for you, you're interested in it, so we're going to do it anyway, right? You ask, I am going to be your humble servant again. So I will provide, because I'm an Aramaic Syriac speaker, I can show you the evidence. So today's live show, guys, is packed. It's full with meat. So lean back, take out your notepads, and start taking notes and taking screenshots. 
What we are going to show you today, not many people can do because there are not many Aramaic speakers out there who can show you the proof how we can trace back the Syriac Aramaic origins. So please guys, bear with me. This is going to be a long live show. So make sure to have some refreshment, maybe something to eat or whatnot. But before we actually start, as you know, guys, we always start with a nice prayer. We always start with a nice prayer. So I want to ask you to pray with me because without God, we are nothing. We are empty. We are empty without God. So pray with me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, we pray. We pray. Oh, Lord Christ, thank you for allowing me to do another live stream again today. Please bless our audience, all the admins and our subscribers. Please bless our families and loved ones. Keep them healthy and safe, O oh Lord. Lord, I want to ask you, I beg you to keep my wife and baby boy healthy and safe. Protect them and bless them. And bless everybody who is here now and listening and watching to our very live stream, including the Muslims. Please, Lord, open their eyes so also they can be saved. Please, Lord, I pray to you, to keep all the Christians on this planet safe, especially those persecuted in your holy name, O Christ. Our Christian brothers and sisters in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Indonesia, Egypt, the Coptic Christians in Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and in the rest of the countries which we did not mention, O Lord. Yes, Lord, please. L please, I beg you. Please guard over them. Lord Christ, I pray to you and ask you to cleanse us with your holy blood and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Please shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be here, who might come to listen and learn about the true face of Islam. Please, Lord, open their eyes so they can be saved. We do not hate them, O oh Lord. You commanded us to love them. This is why we are doing this. Christ, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today and guide me so I can speak the truth, nothing but the truth, without any error or any shame. And Lord, give us wisdom and courage to do whatever must be done in your holy name. We pray, O Christ. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Nice to see you. Please share, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to receive notifications. Share today's live show on social media, guys. Please, Christians, we have all work, homework to do. I cannot do this on myself. Yes, I can put it on uh, Patreon, on my Patreon page that I'm going to go live, to do a live stream, on my Facebook. But I need you to spread the links, to spread the links to my live shows, guys. I cannot do this. I cannot reach enough people. I need your help, okay? I need your help to succeed, to allow our streams and live shows and videos to go viral. We want those poor, deluded, brainwashed Muslims saved. We want them to join us in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ that will come on earth. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Please, Lord, save these people. Please. Please, Lord. Especially those who are seeking for the truth. And since you, Lord, claimed to be al-haq, the truth, please open their eyes. Please use us. Use us. To spread the truth. Alright guys, welcome. Today's live show again. The Quran. The Quran, the Syriac and Aramaic origins. Syriac or Aramaic origins. Welcome. Let us start. Are you ready guys? Are you ready? <sighs> Someone sent me uh, on Patreon. Someone on Patreon. One of our Patreon subscribers he sent me uh, a message and he said you know what let me show you a link uh, about a conversation that happened I think it was yesterday correct me if I'm wrong guys I think it was yesterday on our dear brother Christian Prince his live stream a lady called in and uh, wanted to talk to Christian Prince and she mentioned my name on Christian Prince his live show she said that she watched my live stream regarding the three Meccan questions, Meccan slash Jewish questions that Muhammad failed to answer. So you see how important it is, guys, to spread our information because Muslims do watch our videos. 
And that lady, that Muslim lady, was perfect example, perfect proof that Muslims do watch our shows, our videos. So please invite and share. It's really necessary for you guys to do your homework. I can do this on my own. Honest, honest, honest to God. I can't do this on my own. I need your help, guys. And, and the Muslim lady is about to leave Islam because of my live show about the three questions that the Meccans got from the Jews that they fired at Muhammad. And Muhammad failed to deliver. He failed to answer these questions. Please, guys. All right. Let me give you a small introduction, guys, regarding today's topic. Let us start with a hadith. Let me start with this hadith. Let me give you the link, actually. Admins, take over, please. Uh, Christians, don't allow Muslims or any trolls to distract you. We have admins for that. Our admins will take care of the live chat, right? Don't go on side tangents or side conversations. Please, please, Christians. We, we already have Muslims who are trolls. Don't act like them, please. Focus, take notes, right? All right, guys. This hadith that you see here, is a Sahih Hadith. I gave you the link. A Sahih Hadith. And it's really actually a very important Hadith. To understand what was going on when the Quran was basically being compiled and written. In the time of Uthman and Abu Bakr. So read with me. Anas bin Malik told of Hudayfa bin al-Yaman coming to Uthman. So you know this is the time. When Uthman was in power, Caliph Uthman, right? When he was in power, the third Caliph, after having led the Syrians along with the Iraqis at the conquest of Armenia and Azerbaijan. Armenia and Azerbaijan, guys, were Christian countries. Till today, Armenia is a Christian country. Azerbaijan fell in Muslim hands, and today it's majority Shia country, Azerbaijan. Unfortunately, Muslims conquered it, but they failed to conquer Armenia because Armenia till today is a very, very important country that we should be proud about that Muslims did actually fail to conquer it because it's still a Christian practicing country. Very poor country, but they are Christians. So this is when the conquest of Armenia and Azerbaijan in that time. Guys, please fa focus. Please focus. Yes, Azerbaijan fell to the dark, so exactly XYZ. Focus, guys. Being alarmed at the differences in reading Quran. So, guys, there were multiple Qurans in the time of Uthman. Do you see it? Do you read it? Being alarmed at their differences in reading. So, there were many different readings, many different Quran versions. This guy, right? Mr. Hudayfa bin al-Yaman, he came to Uthman and said to Uthman, Oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, oh, the prince, basically the ruler of the Ummah, of the Islamic nation, Caliph Uthman, please, brada, commander, brada, of the believers, of the faithful, set these people right before they disagree about the Quran in the manner of the Jews and the Christians. So basically what is going on? This guy is sending a request to Uthman. Please, Uthman. Please, Muslims are reading the Quran differently. There are too many differences in Quran readings. Too many different Quran versions. Please, help us. Because we don't want the Muslim Ummah to become like the Jews and the Christians. Right? They thought in that time that the Jews and Christians were reading different <laughs> Bibles. Little did they know. That we have actually only one Bible. But anyway. So Uthman, you know, started to tap dance. He said, I have to do something about it, brother. Right? Uthman therefore sent a message to Hafza. Asking her to send the sheets to him so that they might make copies of them. So what's going on? Guys, there were two incidents that happened regarding the compilation of the Quran. The first time that the Quran was collected and compiled was in the time of Abu Bakr. So in the time of Abu Bakr, right, when Abu Bakr was in power and the second time when Uthman was in power. 
Guys, I hope you can take notes. This is very important stuff. This is what the Muslim sources are telling us. So now in the second period when Uthman is in power, Uthman is asking, he's asking his people to go get the Quran, the compiled Quran by Abu Bakr that was under the pillow of Hafza. Right? So Abu Bakr gave the, that compiled Quran, the first version, <laughs> guys, the first version of the Quran. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The first version that they collected and put uh, basically in sheets, in paper sheets, it was all that time under the pillow of Hafza. Not Hafz, Mr. Abdul, not Hafz, Hafza. Do you see it? She is one of the wives of Muhammad, like Aisha and so on. So Hafza had that copy that Abu Bakr compiled, ordered to compile. So he took that copy of Hafza, right? So they got that copy, and then Uthman, what is basically happening here? Uthman starts to command Zayd ibn Thabit, right? To collect all the rest of the manuscripts on bones, stones, wood. Remember, animal skin was really expensive in that time. So, Zayd ibn Thabit said, you know, uh, you're asking me that our prophet Muhammad did not ask me to do. You're asking me to do a job that is even bigger than a mountain. He didn't want to do it. Right? So, Zayd ibn Thabit that you see on the screen and Abdullah bin Zubair and Sa'id bin Al-As And Abdullah bin Al-Harith bin Hisham. Guys, and uh, for the people who do not know, you see these highlighted names, guys? Do you see them? Give me one if you see them. These highlighted names are all family of Uthman. So Uthman was really a son of Satan. He only commanded his own family to do the job. So it was an inside job, right? Collecting the Quran again for the second time from bones, stones, and rewrite the Quran and make one perfect copy. As if the perfect copy of Hafza was not perfect enough. The first version was not perfect enough, right? So they had to make another perfect Quran, revise it, change it, change the text, and so on. And Zayd ibn Thabit, man, under his command, he started to create one copy again, second copy, and what happened? What happened then? Uthman gave instructions to, if we can read, Uthman gave instructions to the three members of the Quraysh that when they and Zayd ibn Thab disagreed, so if the four of them disagreed about anything in the Quran, they were to write it in the dialect of the Quraysh. Uh -huh. So guys, Uthman ordered Zayd ibn Thabit to rewrite the Quran, recollect the Quran again, use the version of Hafza under her pillow to rewrite it again and make one perfect copy in the Quraysh dialect. And I want you to focus, guys. Remind yourself that it happened in the dialect of the Quraysh of Mecca, supposedly. And you will see why I'm saying supposedly, because they failed miserably. Just watch. For it came down only in their dialect. They did so, and when they had met several copies of the sheets, Uthman returned the sheets to Hafza. Now, where is that uh, uh, Mus'haf of Hafza? Yeah, Muslimin, can you show me that <laughs> Mus'haf of Hafza? Can you show me the Mus'haf of uh, Uthman himself? No, you cannot. It's missing. It's lost in history. They cannot show us. He then sent a copy of those which they had transcribed to every region. So what did Uthman do, guys? Uthman, as we just read before, he, Uthman ordered Zayd ibn Thabit to recreate one perfect copy. And then from that perfect copy, he made five copies and he sent them to five different regions. Can you show me just one Uthmanic 7th century complete copy, a Muslim? If you can show me, I will give you $1,000. Show me one Uthmanic Complete manuscript from the 7th century. Can you show me that? If you can show me, I'll give you $1,000. 
any Muslim? Yeah, so this happened, guys, like uh, our brother here, you're paying attention, Mr. Abdul. This happened in the Hijazi dialect, basically. The Hijaz, guys, is the area. The Hijaz is the area, basically, uh, of Mecca and Medina. We call that the Hijaz. So the Quran was written in the Hijazi script, in the script, in the dialect of the Quraysh, supposedly. And then what did happen next? What did happen next, guys? Uthman started to, after that to burn all the rest of the manuscripts. Now, guys, let me ask you a question. When we ever find a manuscript, a new manuscript for our Bible, listen, Christians, carefully. Look at the taqiyya, look at the deception of Uthman. When you Christians, when we Christians find a new manuscript for our Bible, are we going to burn it like Uthman? Or are we going to keep it with our lives, safeguard it with our lives? That's a really important question. Again, here's the $1 million question. Why would Uthman burn original manuscripts? These are manuscripts that were on bones, stones, wood, animal skin, etc. Why would you burn original manuscripts? And why Christians would actually safeguard any manuscript for the Bible? Because Muslims, the very beginning of Islam has, was built on deception to deceive the Ummah. And as you see, there were multiple different Quran versions, right? We show you. Muslims started to fight among each other. No, you, your Quran is false. No, my Quran is correct. That's happened. Right? That happened during that conquest of Armenia and Azerbaijan. That's the whole idea why Uthman started to tap dance and recreate a new copy, a new Uthmanic copy. Getting rid of, yeah, getting rid of the evidence exactly unnamed. Bam! You caught it. So to get rid, <laughs> to get rid of the evidence, Uthman had to burn and barbecue all the Quranic manuscripts. These are original, original manuscripts, guys. That's damaging, man. Let us get rid of the evidence that actually the Quran was not one, as the Muslims have claimed. There were multiple, multiple of different Quran readings, which they call Qira'at, right? Qira'a, singular, Qira'at, multiple. Plural. So do you see that the Quran was never one in the first place? Never. And do you see how Uthman is a filthy scumbag giving his own family, right? Giving only his own family the most important positions? You see, guys? Why didn't he ask Ibn Mas'ud, obey Ibn Kaab and the rest of the two when Muhammad said, go to four, and uh, Phil Herrera can give you the hadith, <coughs> Muhammad said, go to four people. <coughs> Where are those four people? Are they there? No. So Uthman didn't even listen to Muhammad, his own prophet. He rejected Ibn Mas'ud, he rejected Ubay Ibn Ka'ab. Those are main sahaba regarding the recitation of the Quran. Why didn't you go to them? Here is why. Because Ibn Mas'ud had 111 chapters. <laughs> Ibn Mas'ud, guys, had 111 chapters. Ubay had 116 chapters. Ubay ibn Ka'b. Let me type it out as short for Ubay. About Zaid, this <laughs> young boy, Zaid, he was far too young, according to Ibn Mas'ud's own words. He called him a deceiver. He said, the Uthmanic copy is a deception. That's what Ibn Mas'ud said. Because Zayd ibn Thabit's copy was only 114 chapters. That's what Ibn Mas'ud said about today's... Well, Muslims say this is the Quran of today. is from Uthman. Well, that's a lie. They cannot prove it. But let's assume that the Uthmanic Quran is 114 chapters as today. That means, according to Ibn Mas'ud, who Muhammad mentioned as first guy, according to him, it's nothing but deception. This Quran of today is pure taqiyya, pure to deception. Right? Guys, please focus in the live chat. 
Now, guys, what happens more? As we mentioned, Uthman burned all original Quranic manuscripts. He burned six of the seven ahruf. Muslims love to brag about that the Quran was in seven modes. Show me, show me those seven modes. Well, they don't exist anymore because Uthman got rid of the evidence. So Uthman only took one harf, singular, out of the seven ahruf. Muslim scholars do not agree what those ahruf are. Literally, it means letters, right? Like the alphabet, letters. Harf, ahruf, letters. But what are they exactly? No scholar can tell you what these are. They call them modes, they call them all kind of nicknames. But when you ask a Muslim, what is those ahruf? They cannot tell you. They among themselves cannot agree what they mean. They will lie to you and say, well, it means dialects. No, other will say it means uh, uh, modes. What is it exactly? We don't know, brother. Allahu alam. Allah knows breasts. So guys, according to Muhammad, the Quran was sent down by Jibreel in seven ahruf. Yet, Uthman, who became the new prophet, Uthman clearly was the last prophet after Muhammad. Because he, con he could abrogate six out of the seven ahruf. So Uthman became the final prophet of Islam. Else, who gave Uthman the authority to burn the Quran of Allah? You see, guys, Uthman was the last prophet, not Muhammad. Because else, who gave divine inspiration to Uthman to burn six out of the seven ahruf? And guys... Let me tell you a little secret. I found a Muslim website that agrees with me. Look. This Muslim website actually confirms that Uthman, look guys, look what it says here. Uthman removed six ahruf and only kept one harf. Do you see it? This is a Muslim, Muslim website, guys, that I found. That is basically telling you what I told you earlier about uh, that uh, Uthman, uh, you know... Uh, Recollected the Quran, gave the command to Zayd ibn Thabit, and uh, to rewrite it in the Quraysh dialect. And he burned six out of the seven. You see this in front of you, right? And he continues saying, today, brother, this Muslim brother says, today the Quran is only in the half of the Quraysh since the time of Uthman. Let me bust that lie. Let me spank that lie and bury it forevermore. Guys, are you ready? Do you see, guys, how Muslims agree with me? Uthman, who became the last final prophet of Islam, he received divine inspiration from Allah to burn the words of Allah, burning six out of the seven ahruf and keeping only one harf. What is that harf? We don't know. What are the ahruf? We don't know. Muslim scholars do not agree what they are. So when they say to you, these are modes, they lie to you because they among themselves don't have any single clue what the harfs or the haruf mean. Guys, I hope you are taking notes. This is very important. Today's live show is really, really important, guys. Please rewatch it, retake uh, 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 notes, uh, whatever you must do. Share today's live show on social media. And I even didn't go yet to the main topic. I have to do this, guys, as introduction, because else you have no idea what the whole story is all about. So please bear with me, guys. Live shows tend to be long. Again, guys, this Abdul on this website just agreed with me that Uthman only kept one harf and he burned the six out of the seven. So he only kept one. But wait, today's Quran, guys, as you know, the Hafs version, the most popular Quran version on this planet is the Hafs version, who Muslims got from the liar and deceiver, this thief among thieves, this Hafs, who lived around 200 years after the death of Muhammad. He is a liar, he is a thief, cannot be trusted. All of his hadith are fabricated, yet they take, the irony, yet they take his Quran version. And they made it even the number one Quran version, Qira'a, they call it Qira'a, on this planet. But wait, wait, like wait, wait, ya ya akhi, ya Muslim, wait, where do you want to go? Guys, this Abdul here said, that the harf, the final harf that was not burned, 
should be in the Qureshi dialect. The Qureshi, the Qureshi dialect, right? Dialect or language, let's say. But wait. Today's Quran is not in the Quraysh dialect, which is the Hijazi script, right? The Hijazi script, guys, should have been the correct script for the Uthmanic Quran, right, guys? The Hijazi script, the area that is called Mecca and Medina, we call that the Hijaz, meaning the Hijazi. Do you see it? Do you hear it? Hijazi script. The Quran of Hafs should have been in the Hijazi script, yet it's in the Kufi script from Kufa, nowadays Iraq. <laughs> oh boy, I just destroyed the Quran of the Ummah, guys. I just destroyed Allah's Quran because if you Muslims claim that the Uthmanic manuscript, the Uthmanic copy should have been in the in the Qureshi dialect, it should have not been in a Kufic script as the Hafs of Quran of today. It should have been in the Hijazi script. Yet the number one popular Quran is in the Kufi script from Kufa, Iraq. Guys, I did a Google search, Google Maps search. Look, I found out that Kufa, nowadays Iraq, do you see? This is Iraq. Kufa is here. And Mecca and Medina are all the way down there. So guys... Imagine, today's Quran, the number one popular, there are multiple qira'at, multiple versions, but today's number one Quran, the Hafs version, was written basically uh, in Kufa, in the Kufi script. Kufa, Iraq. You see, here is Baghdad, here is Iraq, this is Kufa. So there is 1.6, sorry, 1,674 kilometers between those cities, between Mecca and Kufa, between Mecca and Kufa, let me give you the link, guys. I'm not sure if it's going to fit. Uh, maybe I need to make it smaller. But you yourself can do uh, a Google Map search to get an idea. How is this possible? You Muslims say that the Quran of Uthman was written in the Qureshi dialect, yet today's number one popular Quran is in the Kufi script. Uh oh. So there is, guys, again, there is 1.674 kiloma kilometers. 1,674 kilometers. Kilometers. Sorry if I'm butchering the guys, you know, my English. Yeah. But you get the idea. Between the distance between Kufa and Mecca is 1,674 kilometers. That's a disaster. That's a disaster. That's a disaster. So where is the Uthmanic Quran in the Hijazi script from the 7th century complete? Where is it? I want to read it, man. I want to enjoy that uh, reading of that manuscript. Where is it? Where can I find it? Poof. It disappeared in thin air. It does not exist. It's lost in history, basically. Again, yet Muhammad was born in Mecca and lived in Medina, which is a different Arabic script, different dialect. Uh-oh. So where is the original complete Quran of the 7th century from the area that Muhammad lived in, which is basically the area, the Hijaz, the Qureshi dialect, that the Quran should have been in, the original Quran should have been in the Hijazi script. Where is it? I want to read it. I want to see it with my own eyes. You Muslims claim you have the Uthmanic Quran. That's a lie from hell. It doesn't say that, RC. Guys, do you, do you see the damage here? Do you see the disaster here? Do you see any claim that the Muslims make about regarding the manuscripts? They conflict. They contradict. They contradict one another. They say we have the Quran of Uthman yet... They have a different script. Today's Quran of Hafs is a different script. It's a Kufi script from Kufa, Iraq. That's a disaster, man. They don't have the original Uthmanic manuscript in the Hijazi script. The original Quran 
manuscript of Uthman. It's missing. It's gone. Remember. Remember. Uthman created five new copies. He burned the rest. He created five new copies. And he sent those five new copies to five conquered regions. Show me just one. I don't want you, Muslims. I don't want you to show me five. I only ask one copy that is preserved in the Hijazi script. One original 7th century complete Uthmanic manuscript. Show me one. Show me. You have been lied to. You are deceiving yourselves, ya Muslimi, and you are deceiving us. But we do dare to cross the red line. Remember what uh, Yasser Qadi said? When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. Things get very, very awkward and difficult. When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep dive, I'm, 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 I'm a scuba diver. Things get very, very awkward and difficult. We are more than happy to go to go diving anywhere. If I were to give you a blank muscle, uh, 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 let's not. I'm a scuba diver. We are more than happy to go to go diving anywhere. If I were to give you a blank muscle, uh, 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 let's not. Let, let's. You, you're pushing me. I'm a scuba diver. We are more than happy to go to go diving anywhere. If I were to give you a blank mushaf. The standard narrative has holes in it. Guys, this is the standard narrative that has holes in it that Yasser Qadi was talking about. This very huge hole. This is the hole that led Yasser Qadi, Dr. Yasser Qadi, Sheikh Yasser Qadi, to start to doubt. This is what he was talking about, guys. This very topic that we are showing you on the screen and talking about. This is it. Do you understand why Yasser Qadi started to doubt, guys? But he eventually did not dare to cross that red line. But today I am crossing that red line. Remember the red line that only Christians and Orientalists dare to cross? But Muslims don't. They don't dare to question this disaster. Right? What are the seven modes? What are the seven ahruf? We don't know, brother. You're talking, you're bragging about seven ahruf. Show me one harf. One. You can't. It's missing, it's gone, it is lost in history. You only have the wrong, the wrong Quran, the Hafs Quran. And guys, can anyone tell me why? Anyone in the live chat, listen carefully, guys. Christians, Muslims, I don't care what you are. Can anyone in the live chat tell me why the Hafs Quran became the number one popular version? Anyone in the live chat? I hope you have been at paying attention in on our many live streams that we did regarding this topic. Can you tell me why, guys? Why the Hafs version became the number one popular Quran? Anyone? Help me out here, Christians. Muslims, help me out here. Paladin, you're almost correct, but why political? Why, Tony Hollow, why? Those are, you are only giving me description, but give me the, 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 the specific reason why. Ask Truth Apologetics, almost, but you're still missing something, brother. Welcome to my live show. Guys, uh, give my dear brother here, Ask Truth Apologetics, some love. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Awesome brother in Christ. Us truth apologetics, but there is a step before that, before the Cairo. Come on, guys, think with me, think hard. I want your answers. Marjana, welcome, nice to see you. Almost, guys, you're almost there, but you're missing one step before that. Before that, KL, before the Egyptian school system. Why? There you go, Steve Herzl. Bam! Congratulations. Because of the popularity among the Ottomans. Guys, the Ottomans, and remember, uh, Al-Azhar University. Why is it called Al-Azhar? Because regarding, uh, supposedly, the daughter of uh, Khadija, Khadija, Fatima, Fatima Zahra. Guys, do you hear it? Al Her other nickname was Al-Zahra. Basically a flower. So Al-Azhar is named after Fatima, the daughter of Khadija. So guys, the Ottomans used the Hafs version. And uh, since, uh, <laughs> since the Al-Azhar University 
is basically uh, following, because the Ottomans were in power, they introduced the house version to make it the number one popular reading. So that's the first step. Then the second step is Al-Azhar, who introduced the Quran as we know it today, the Hafs Quran, in 1924. So because of the Ottoman Empire, we're using the Hafs version. Did you catch it, guys? I hope you can take notes, because it seemed that not many people knew. Only Steve gave us the right answer. Congratulations, Steve. You have been paying attention. I salute you. Do you see, guys, why we always need to bring up this topic? To become, for us, for all of us, because I myself sometimes forget things. We are humans. So for it to become second nature, we need to bring up these topics, as you see. Because of the Ottoman Empire, Hafs version became the number one. And Al-Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt, were forced, right, to use that version. But the problem is, the, it's in the Kufi script, <laughs> in, from Kufa. Yet Muslims claim that the Quran of Uthman was written in the Qureshi dialect. Well, you have a problem, you just an created another problem, because it should have been in the Hijazi script. Yet the Hafs version is in the Kufi script which is 1,674 kilometers distance. So the Quran of Hafs was written in Kufa, yet the Uthmanic Quran was in Mecca, Medina. Wow! Disaster! Where is that Hijazi script? Where is that original complete Quran of Uthman from the 7th century? I want to read it. Where is it? Where is it? Guys, do you have any idea what kind of nuclear bomb we just dropped on the face of the Ummah? Of the face of the Islamic nation? They don't have the Quran of Uthman anymore. It's missing. It's gone. It's poof. Right? So the Quran of today is written. The number one popular Quran reading, the version, is written in the wrong script. Guys, in the wrong script, in the wrong period, in the wrong area. This one happened hundreds and hundreds of years later in Iraq. Much later than the death of Muhammad, the death of Uthman and so on. That's a disaster, man. So guys, what happens later? What happens after Uthman? What happened much later after Uthman? In the Umayyad period, guys. In the Umayyad Caliphate period under uh, Muawiyah, uh, and so on, and so on. What happened then? When the Umayyad came in power, guys, when the Umayyad uh, Caliphate came into power, from that period, from the 8th, 9th century, and so on, we have found manuscript. But the original Uthmanic manuscript, it's missing. It's gone. It's lost in history. So the Quran is not preserved from the time of Uthman. It's missing. So if that's not enough, guys, we just showed you that today's Quran is in the Kufi script, in a wrong period, wrong area. If that's not enough, Muslims even corrupted the Quran even further. Why, Rob? Here's why. A guy much later called Abu al-Asad Abu al -Asad al duali introduced the large dot system in the Arabic text. Remember, the original Quran, guys, the original Quran had no dots, had no vowels, remember? Only a skeleton text, right? The skeleton, oh, the skeleton text, skeleton text, which we call the what? The resim, the resim. Without vowels, without the dots that you see in the, in the Arabic text, right? So this Abu al-Aswad al introduced the large dot system in the Arabic text. Much later, <laughs> Another guy came to introduce more corruption to the Quran. His name was Ibn Yusuf al-Hajjaj. Introduced the vowels, the tashki, the damma, fatha, kasra, those vowels on top, underneath, the, the letters, the Arabic letters. So now do you see how the Arabic of the Quran, how the Arabic text came into existence, started to get the shape as we know it today in the Quran, right? 
Like example here. Like this. You see the vowels on top? Vowels and dotting? It wasn't there in the time of Uthman. You had only the skeleton text, the letters and so on. The, the vowels on top, all these things, we call it Dhamma Fatha Kasa, the vowels, the Tashkil, and the dotting, the Tanqeet, Tanqeet, dotting, and the Tashkil, must, was introduced much later. Introduced much later. And they started to even corrupt the Quran even more than it was already corrupted. Right? And if that's not enough, Al-Hajjaj, Yusuf Ibn Yusuf Al-Hajjaj declared his version to be the only valid one. <laughs> who gave Al-Hajjaj, Yusuf Ibn Yusuf Al-Hajjaj, who gave him divine inspiration to create a new Quran? Who gave him that divine inspiration, man? And even his version was burned. Guys, the Uthmanic Quran is missing. Yusuf, Ibn Yusuf al-Hajjaz version got burned. In the end, you don't have the original Quran. All of them, what, what is happening here, guys? Anytime, anytime a new Quran is introduced, a new version of the Quran is introduced, it gets burned. Even the version of al-Hajjaj was burned. Yeah, al-Hajjaj became a prophet too, exactly. And what did he even do, guys? Al-Hajjaj, he declared, no, only my version is the correct one, the valid one. And what, they, what happened, actually, guys, they even started to prohibit the use of Ibn Mas'ud's Qira'ah, the 111 chapters. Guys, when Ibn Mas'ud was alive, this, one of the main of the Sahaba, the one of the main four that Muhammad told you to go to regarding the citation, they, broke, they have broken even his hip. They broke... Imagine, guys, they broke the hip of Ibn Mas'ud. That's the same guy, guys, when we were talking about, the same guy who said that Muhammad was raped by naked men. That guy. Say, they broke his hip. They broke his hip regarding his qira'ah. He said, no, your qira'ah is wrong. Well, wait, the guy was the number one that Muhammad said, go to Ibn Mas'ud. They broke his hip. They wanted to kill him. Imagine, guys, Muslims among each other fight. They say, no, your Quran is wrong. My Quran is correct. A huge fight, guys, a huge fight. But Muslims don't dare to talk about it. They don't want to cross that red line that we are crossing today. And Al-Hajjaj, the same use, Ibn Yusuf Al-Hajjaj, made changes to the Quran, purging, deleting the text of any references hostile to the Umayyads and declaring his version to be the only valid one. BAM! Guys, do you see how the Quran that we know it today was actually created in the Umayyads period? Not in the Uthman time. Uthman's Quran was destroyed. It was, it was removed, maybe abrogated by Allah in the 7th century. <laughs> the Quran of today is the Umayyads Quran, guys. The Quran of today, the manuscripts that we have that actually also conflict, contradict one another. The top copy manuscript, the uh, uh, the Sana'a manuscript from Yemen, the top copy is in Istanbul, uh, the Samarkand, Uzbekistan, and so on. They all contradict one another. D many pages are missing. Not one is complete. Not one agrees with another. And all are after the 7th century, from the 8th century, and so on all come from the period of the Umayyad. So we can only conclude, guys, we can only conclude that the Quran, the, the Quranic manuscripts, the Quranic manuscripts that we have access to are only from the Umayyad period. I actually believe, and I actually believe, I don't like to talk about it much because I, like I said in the earlier beginning of our live show today, I don't like to talk about it much. You know why, guys? Because I like to go to the Muslim sources as they are now to spank Islam from within. Because whatever you say to the Muslims, they won't accept it. So I believe that even, even Muhammad, even the Prophet Muhammad of Islam, is nothing but a creation. He is nothing but a fabrication created by these Umayyads. Islam as we know it now 
is a fabrication. But we can't talk about it with Muslims. Muslims don't accept that. Imagine saying to a Muslim, Islam is nothing but a creation. They don't accept that, right? So for me, yes, we need to talk about it among ourselves to show you the disasters from the early stages of Islam. But Muslims don't accept that. I like rather spank Muhammad from the Quran and the Sahih Hadiths and so on. Right, guys? If you know how I deal with Islam. But it's not bad so to now and then bring this topic up. Right? So the Quran that we have today is from the Umayyad period, not from the Uthmanic period. Much too late, not complete, not one manuscript is complete, much too late. Now guys, that was all an introduction. Now let me go to the Aramaic origins. Are you ready guys? Since I'm an Aramaic speaker, I am an Aramaic Syriac speaker, I can show you the disasters. All right? Let us actually now go to the main topic of today. Are you ready, guys? Give me one, please. Please invite more people because not many people can do what we do. We don't have many Christian apologists who know the Aramaic language, right, guys? All right. Guys, since I just showed you I just proved to you that the Quran is created in the Umayyad Caliphate, not in the time of Uthman, because Muslims can't prove it. They can't show us an Uthmanic complete Quran. It's missing, it's gone. Poof. We actually found even coins. These are coins, guys, that are traced back to Muawiyah's time. Muawiyah was the caliph of his time, right, in the Umayyad Caliphate in the year 661, between 661 and 680. Uh, Muawiyah supposedly died in the year 680. We found coins. These are coins, guys. You see the cross here? Crosses. How is it possible that we are finding on Islamic, supposed Islamic coins, crosses? Those are crosses, exactly unnamed. Wow! Just a second, guys. Crosses on the Umayyad Caliphate coins? Yes, brother, do you see it? You see also an M, Muawiyah. I think this is for Muawiyah, M, Muawiyah. And these are one, two, three crosses. What are crosses doing on the Umayyad Caliphate coins? Wow! Wow, wow. Disaster. Here is more. We found actually... Writings on stones that date back to the time of Muawiyah. You can find this in Amman, Jordan. Jordan, remember, brother J. Smith and sister Hatun and all these other people like uh, Mel Gibson, a historian. They love to talk about this stuff. I, myself, this is not my field. I don't care much about it, to be honest with you. I rather leave it to other people. This is why I don't bring historian things up on my live shows, but I can talk about it and I can show you proof. I rather spank Muhammad and his man-made cult from the Islamic sources. Right, guys? But we know if we just do some study, we find historical evidences that actually even in the Umayyad period, they were Christians, they were not Muslims. Islam, as we know it, came into existence by Muslims by people who wanted to go against Christianity. Islam is nothing but a Christian heretical cult, guys. And the proof is in front of you. Guys, this tablet or whatever you want to call it that we found here's more more uh, clear one. It starts with a cross. Do you see the cross here again? What is a cross doing on an Islamic, supposed Islamic inscription? Wow! A cross? They start with a cross. This guy, this Muawiyah must, must have been a Christian, guys. And Muslims tell you, this guy is a, is a Muslim. How is that possible? So they start with a cross, and we have even, uh, we translated actually what is here said. In the days of Abdullah, the servant of God, Muawiyah. But why are you starting with a cross? 
the commander of the faithful, the Amir al-Mu'minin, the prince of the Ummah. And guys, again, as you see here, uh, this is in the hot baths in Amman, today's Jordan, Amman, that we found. Historical evidence, guys, with cross crosses all over the place. How is this possible? Why would a Muslim ruler, why would Muawiyah put on his coins on the tablets that we found crosses? That doesn't make sense. Do you see, guys, do you see there was no Islam in the, in the beginning? Islam is an invention. Islam is a creation. Islam as we know it today, the Kaaba, everything, guys. Everything that you see now with your own eyes, the Quran, even the Quran itself, nothing but a creation. It's created. Boy, man, this, this is disaster, man. You see it, guys? Take a screenshot if you like so. How, how is it possible? We see all Christian crosses all over the place. On the coins, everywhere. Islam is nothing but a complete fabrication. But like, like I said earlier, Muslims won't accept that. So I myself rather go to the Quran, I go to the Hadith to spank Muhammad from within. I don't like to talk about this because in the end they won't, they won't even, ex even if you can prove it in front of them, they won't accept it because they only accept what the Muslim sources say. But historical evidence destroys Islam, proves that Islam is a creation. People from who, you know what, what happened guys? Let me tell you. As Zubair, have you ever heard of the name As Zubair? As Zubair guys, he stole the black stones the black stones were stolen many times. The Kaaba was destroyed many times. But this is Zubair. The black stones, guys, the black stones were originally where? In Jordan. Petra. As Zubair stole the black stones and went to Mecca. That's how Islam was invented, guys. And there they built the Kaaba. So as Zubair is one of the ga main guys that introduced Islam as we know it. The black stones had nothing to do with that some desert in Arabia called Mecca. And Mecca did not exist. Right? As Zubair, as Zubair, a very famous guy in Islam, he stole the black stones from Jordan, from Petra, and he went the black stones to Mecca to create Islam. Okay? No. Know it, guys. Own it. Because Islam in the time of Muawiyah was not called Islam because we see red crosses. Crosses all over the place. Crosses all over the place. Crosses all over the place. On coins. How can this be Islam? How, how is this called Islam? Right? Anyway. Now, guys, let me continue. German scientists came with this nickname called the Proto-Quran. The Proto-Quran. The Proto-Quran, guys, basically the Quran. Before the Quran that we know it now, <laughs> it was in Aramaic. Guys, everything that you see here on the left are the nicknames of Jesus. Even the name Muhammad is the title, is the divine title for Jesus. Much later, people like Azubair and so on, they stole the divine title of Jesus himself, glory to his name, and they said, Muhammad is a person. He's the last prophet. <laughs> Guys, Abdullah, servant of God. Muhammad, the one who is to be praised, that's Jesus. Ali, the elevated one, Jesus. And so on, and so on. Mahdi, the redeemer, that's Jesus. The speaker for God. That's Jesus, the speaker for God the Father. All these nicknames, all these divine titles are for Jesus, but they made it sound as if it's Islam. How can Muhammad be the praised one? That's the meaning of Muhammad, right, guys? Isn't that uh, the divine title, a divine title? Muhammad is not a name. It's a divine title, guys. Divine title of Jesus.
You see how the proto-Quran was all about Jesus. It's basically nothing but a lectionary. The Quran itself is nothing but a lectionary, guys. To affirm, to affirm, to confirm our scripture. The original Aramaic Quran was nothing but lectionary to affirm and confirm our scripture. A lectionary. Quran is not an Arabic word. It's the Quran, guys, is an Aramaic word. Quryunu or Quryana, meaning lectionary. A book. The Aramaic pre Quran, exactly KL. Yes. Now, guys, let me give you an example. Now I'm going to take a deep dive and take you with me, brother. When we talk about the crucifixion of Jesus, Muslims always go to one and one and only one ayah in the Quran. Chapter 4, ayah 157, right guys? And for their saying, who are they? The Jews. The Jews are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah. There's nothing called Jesus. It's Isa. Isa, the son of Mary. There is nothing called Mary. It's Maryam. <laughs> the messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Do you see it, guys? But Muslims don't know that this text was in the Aramaic originally. Rob, what are you talking about? No. Even this ayah, this famous ayah, that is supposedly, according to the Muslims, denying the death and crucifixion of Jesus? Yes. Rob, prove it. Please prove it. Guys, I know you have never heard of this before, but let me show you. The Quranic conjunction, the W, wa, wama, wama, right? Wama, wama. Do you see this highlighted word here? Wama is actually an Aramaic word, a Syriac Aramaic word. Wama is similar to Aramaic, wa, meaning so, then, and, and. So, then, and, and. So the wa, in Aramaic means so, then, and end. The Quranic word wama, 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 qataluhu, wama salabu, wama, is an Syriac word, and it is an into, inter, interrogative pronoun means what? What? It means what? Right? Wama, or wamu, depends on the Aramaic dialect that you speak, uh, Sam Shaman would say wama, I would say wamo. Wama, wamo. Depends on your uh, Aramaic dialect. I'm a Syriac suryoyo. We call it in, 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 uh, in our Syriac language, we call that suryoyo. That is the Aramaic dialect, suryoyo. Okay, suryoyo. Is an uh, interrogative pronoun means what? The Quranic verse, wama kataluhu is identical to the Aramaic wam qutlu Syriac wamu qatlu or wama qutlu means what they slew what they slew the Quranic verse wama salabuhu is identical to the Syriac wamu salbu or wama salbu meaning what they crucified in other words the Quran is saying what they slew and what they crucified which is actually a confirmation of the death and crucifixion of Jesus the Messiah. Bam! So guys, 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 the Quran in the Aramaic would not have attacked the crucifixion and death of Jesus on the cross. No, in the Aramaic, it would have actually confirmed the death of Jesus on the cross. Right? Do you see it? Take a screenshot for the love of God. This is chapter 4, Ayah 157. Just if we use the Syriac language, the Aramaic Syriac language. Wamo or Wama means what? What they slew, what they killed. So it confirms the crucifixion and death of Jesus on the cross. Right? Thank you very much.
Now guys, I told you before, the Aramaic Syriac, Koryona, Koryana or Koryono, and I'm, I'm giving you an example on the screen here, means the lectionary, meaning lectionary. Let's say if we use the name of the Apostle Paul, guys, in the Apostle Paul in Aramaic is called Tfaulus Shlihu. So we say the lectionary of the Apostle Paul. Koryana or Koryono Tfaulus Shlihu. The Apostle Paul. So the Quran, the word Quran is an Aramaic word. It's not an Arabic word. It, has, it was never an Arabic word to begin with. So if we say in the book of Paul or in the letters of Paul, the Apostle Paul, we say in the Suryoyo, in the Syriac, Aramaic Syriac, we say Koryana or Koryono, depends on the dialect. Right? Koryana or Koryono, Tfaulus Shlihu, the Apostle Paul. Take a screenshot, guys. Guys, is this good or what? <laughs> guys, I'm going to take you even more deeper. Just wait. Bear with me, guys. All right. Take a screenshot. Let us continue. If we go back, the purpose, guys, of the Quran originally in the Aramaic, it was nothing but commentary on scripture. Like the Old Testament and the Gospel. The Peshitta and the Diatarsun. The Quran explicitly says several times that it only wants to affirm or confirm scripture before it. The scripture of the Jews and the Christians. People of the book. So the Quran over and over says, Musaddiqan, Muhaymanan, affirming and confirming scripture before it. Do you see it? The word Quran is based on Aramaic word Qoryana, Qoryono, which translates to lectionary in the Aramaic. So the Quran was initially only used as lectionary. Uh -huh. Yes, KL. Bam, you got it. You see, guys? Why we always say the Quran was originally in Aramaic? It was only written to affirm the scripture of the Jews and the Christians. The Holy Bible itself. Yeah, and Muslims will never handle this material, guys, because it exposes the Quran. It exposes Islam. It exposes Muhammad. If Muhammad would have existed anyway. Now, guys, here's more. I, as an Aramaic speaker, can dissect many Aramaic words in the Quran. For example, وَمُهَيْمَنًا In the Arabic, in the Quran, the confirmation, the guardian, guarding of its safety of the Bible, the book of the people of the book, the book of the people of the book, the Jews and Christians. Guys, this very word is an Aramaic word originally. It ha it's not an Arabic word. Muslims will give you tons and tons of different explanations for this word because it's not an Arabic word. Sometimes they translate it as guarding, sometimes as affirming, sometimes as confirmation, confirming. They don't, they don't know what it means. Why? Because it's an Aramaic word. Here, Mehaymenina. When we say in the Aramaic, in the Syriac Aramaic dialect, we say Mehaymenina, we say we believe. We believe in God. Mehaymenina Aloho. Do you hear it? Aloho or Allaha means is a is a synonym for in Hebrew Elohim. Aloho or Allaha. Mehaymenina. For a male, for me, myself, for example, or for our brother here, ask truth apologetics. We are males. We would say, Kum Haymenno. Kum Haymenno. I believe as a man. You see, guys, there are female forms of words and male forms of words. A female, like uh, uh, Sister Carolina or Tamara in the live chat, or uh, Dragon Daenerys, our female admins, they would say in the Aramaic, Kum hey manono, Kum hey manono. A man would say, Kum hey manno. Do you hear the difference, guys? The word is Aramaic, it's not Arabic. 
Well, else why Muslims would translate it in many different ways. Sometimes guarding, sometimes affirming, sometimes confirma confirming confirmation, because it's not an Arabic word. This is in the Quran, guys, by the way. Right? This is these are Quranic words. It's in front of you, the proof is in front of you, guys. I'm an Aramaic speaker, I am confirming that the word is not Arabic. Because why would you give tons and tons and tons of meanings for one word? Because it's not an Arabic word and originally Muslims don't know what it means. Right? Here is more. Musaddiqan. Again, tons of different meanings. Sometimes confirming, sometimes uh, uh, affirming, all kinds of translations. It's not an Arabic word. It's an Aramaic word. Here. Kum sadqina. We believe. Kum sadqina. Musaddiqan. Kum sadqina. Sadqina. Do you hear it? A male, a male would say, Kum sadaqno. Kum sadaqno. I believe. A female would say, Kum sadqono. Kum sadaqno. A male. Kum sadqono. Musaddiqan. It's not an Arabic word. It's not an Arabic word. Do you see? It's in front of you. Like with the Holy Spirit, exactly, Harold Johnson. It's not an Arabic word. It's an Aramaic Hebrew word. Right? The Holy Spirit in Aramaic is Ruhu Qadisho. Ruhu Qadisho. The Muslims have taken it and they introduced the Holy Spirit in the Quran, which they can say to us, who the Holy Spirit is, right? Chapter 17, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I 85. Correct me if I'm wrong regarding the numbers. I'm doing this out of my head. It says that Muhammad, when he was questioned by the Quraysh, remember my last live show, and the Jews, when they came up with the three questions, Muhammad said, I don't know. Ma'adri. I don't know what the Holy Spirit is exactly. Only a small knowledge, little knowledge is given. Because... It has nothing to do with Islam. It's a Christian concept. It's the third person of the Godhead, of the Trinity. Right? Ruhu Qadisho. Ruach. Ruach in Hebrew. Guys, how many more <laughs> examples do I need to give you? Let us continue. Salam. Peace. The word salam. Very basic word. When Muslims say, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. It's not an Arabic word. It's an Aramaic word. Hebrew word. We say shlomo. Here is how the way to write it. Shlo from right to left, guys. All the Semitic languages basically are from right to left, right? I'm not sure about the Hebrew, but I know about the Aramaic. I'm an Aramaic speaker. From right to left. Shlomo. Peace. A paraphrase, of course. Aramaic is older than the Hebrew, right? Abraham spoke Aramaic. It was before Hebrew. Hebrew came much later after Aramaic. The mother language is Aramaic. Right? The mother language is the Aramaic. Aramaic is older than the Hebrew. Exactly, Shandish Berner. Shlomo Aleichu. Do you hear it? Shlomo Aleichu. Muslims took it, they stole it, and they said, Salamu Alaikum. <laughs> it was never Arabic in the first place. Do you see how they copy-paste, plagiarizing even basic things? Arabic is a very new language, guys. Arabic is a very, very new language. Right? Aramaic and Hebrew are much older. Syriac is much older than the Arabic. Shlomo. Shlomo is Aramaic word. Shlomo alaykhu. Peace be upon you. Muslims took it. It became salamu alaykum. A very basic word. Yom. Yom in Arabic means day. In the Aramaic it is yomo. Yomo. You see it? Even the basic word a day. Day. Right? Yomo. 
Arabic, Yom. I hope you can take screenshots, guys. The word father, the word father, Ab in Arabic, in the Aramaic, which was before the Arabic, Abu. If we recite the Lord's Prayer, remember us truth apologetics. I'm not sure if you are here. When that Muhammad and, uh, was talking about the Lord's Prayer, that is a hadith from Muhammad, <laughs> when we busted him. Abun Bashmayu, the Lord's Prayer. Abun Bashmayu, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father that art in heaven. Abu, Abun, Abu. Babi, Baba. Aramaic words. Right? Yeah, depends on the dialect, unnamed again. Uh, Sam Shamun would say Aba, I say Abu. I, as uh, uh, Syriac, Aramaic Syriac dialect, we say Abu. Sam Shamun would say Aba or Abi, Baba. Depends on what you want to use, right? Here is more. Here is a very, very interesting ayah, guys. Very, very interesting ayah. Chapter 23, ayah 20. Read with me. And created the tree that comes forth from Mount Sinai that grows containing oil and curry for the eaters. Here, uh, the writer of the Quran did multiple poopoos. Why? Wrong. Multiple poopoos, brother? Yeah, multiple. Not one, but at least two. Guys, please... Please, uh, forget about the translation. Translation is nothing but taqiyah. But guys, multiple poopoos, why Rob? Here's why. First one is that there are no... <laughs> a lot of mercy. There are no oil or olive trees on Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, guys, is in Egypt. Go to Egypt. In the 7th century, when supposedly the Quran was written, in the 7th century... You could not find one single tree, one oil or olive tree on Mount Sinai. It does not, it does not exist. Right? It does not exist. Much later, much later, the Christians took earth because that earth on Mount Sinai cannot be used to grow olive trees. So much later, Christians took dirt from the Mediterranean, those countries surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. They took it and they uh, went to that monastery. There's a, a very famous monastery uh, in, uh, on the foot of Mount Sinai. Christian Coptic monastery. Very famous. There you have also uh, very old manuscripts for the Bible. They keep very old manuscripts for the Bible. Right? In that monastery, they took much later, many years later, they took some dirt and they started to grow a couple of Olive trees. The Christians did that. But <laughs> in the 7th century, there were not no olive trees to begin with. Guys, this is a geographic historical disaster, in, an error in the Quran. The writer of the Quran doesn't know what he's talking about. This is a disaster. Number two poo-poo is what? This word here. Tur or Turi. Tur. Rob, are you saying that this word is an Aramaic word? Yes. If you ask any Arabic speaking Muslim, any Muslim, what is the word Tur? They can't know. They can't tell you that. Why? Because it's not an Arabic word. Here is the proof. Tur. Tur is an Aramaic word. It was and will never be an Aramaic, or sorry, an Arabic word. It was, and, we'll, and here I made a small mistake, it was never an Arabic word to begin with. The correct Arabic word for mountain is Jabal. Jabal. Do you hear it? Jabal. If you ask an Arabic speaker from the Middle East, let's say from Iraq or Syria or even Saudi Arabia, what is Tur? They don't know. Why? Because it's not an Arabic word. The word for mountain is Jabal. Jabal. Uh -huh. 
you see that people, guys, and here, I put it for you. This is my own words, guys. Classical scholars like Ibn Kathir or At-Tabari, they had to go for the tafsir of the Quran. They had to go to Aramaic-speaking Christian sources to decipher the words of the Quran. <laughs> oh, boy. So, to know what Tur means, they had to go to us, Aramaic-speaking Christians in the Middle East, to get the answer. What does Tur in the Quran mean in chapter 23, ayah 20? It's not an Arabic word. They are uh, translating it as mountain, but it's not an Arabic word. The word in Arabic is Jabal. Jabal. Here is an example. Today's Syriac speakers, Aramaic Syriac speakers would say, like me, Ahna, guys, listen carefully. I'm going to say it in Aramaic. Ahna min tur abdina. Ahna min tur abdina. What does that mean? We are from Tur Abdin, which is nowadays Antioch. Nowadays Antioch. Back in the old days, it was northern Syria, Syria, Turkey, uh, southeast Turkey. That whole area, Syria and Turkey, that was our country. My grandfathers are from there. I told you many times. My grand, even my, you know, my grandpa is from there. He was born there. My grandmother, my other grandmother, my other grandfather are all from Tur Abdin. Nowadays, Antioch. Antakya. They call it in Turkey, Antakya. We have another guy in the live chat. His name is Lin Yeshua. He says, my mom's family are from there. You see, guys, we are perfect example. We are perfect evidence that Jesus and the early Christians, remember, Antioch, the people, the Christians of Antioch, for the very first time, mentioned in the book of Acts, we are, we are evidence, we are the evidence, the living evidence that the people of, that are mentioned in the book of Acts did live there. My family are from there. You're a female? Okay. Welcome, Marilyn. Nice to have you. Guys, do you see how many words are nothing but Aramaic words? So the Quran was originally in Aramaic, not Arabic. Not Arabic. Tur. Tur Abdin. The mountains of Abdin. Those were all Christian lands. And even till today, many Christians live there. There are monasteries, right? Monasteries with uh, Syriac, Aramaic monks who live there, even, uh, guys, Christian priests, right? Uh, the Syriac Orthodox Christian priests, they have to go there and study to become priests. So there are still monasteries there. Guys, I hope you are listening and uh, taking notes. This is really important. Let us continue. Guys, what about the caliphs? What about Abu Bakr, for example? If we take Abu Bakr, right? Abu Bakr, the father of Aisha himself, the first caliph, his name is an Aramaic name. It's a title. It's not a name, it's a title. Abu Bakr means the father of the first born. Abu Bakr, Bakr, Bukro, Bukro, firstborn. Of course, Vigo Bond. It, uh, the Quran, as we know it now, I explained it earlier. You missed it because you joined much too late. So I advise you to rewatch today's live show. We already explained the original Quran is in Aramaic. It's not in Arabic. Abu Bakr, Bukro, firstborn, the father of the firstborn. You see it? It's a title. <laughs> right? Bukro, Bakr, Bakr, Bukro. Thank you very much. Let us continue. Guys, if we go to the Quran, before I show you this, uh, actually, and explain to you the slide, let's say chapter 5, I have 58 in front of you. This word here means prayer. As salawat, or as salat, sorry, as salat. As salat. It's written wrongly because it's not an Arabic word. 
why Rob? Let me show you my slide. It's <laughs> a spelling mistake if we have to assume and go, but why? what the Muslims are telling us. Why? Because if you remove the vowels and the dots, for example, if, let's say the vowels, it becomes a salt, a slot, a slot. That's not. <laughs> that's a. That's a. That's a grammar mistake, guys. If you go to an Arabic school, let's say you are uh, a student in university in a, in the Middle East, if you write it like this, the Quranic way, like this, you will get an F. You will fail your Arabic exam. If you write it the Qur the Quranic way, you will fail your exam. Your teacher will give you an F. You will fail. You'll get an F from your teacher, from your Arabic teacher, from your Arabic class. Why, Rob? Well, the correct way to write a salat is this way. A salat. A salat. But the Quran writes it as a slot. A slot? Yes. So we have a spelling mistake in the Quran? Yes. The proof is in front of you. Let me give you the link. And you can... Fast check with my, take a screenshot of my slide and fast check. The correct way again is a salat, like this way, not like this way. There is an O here. I mean, you don't need to be a genius to see the differences in both words. The correct one, the green one is correct. The red one in the Quran is contains a mistake. But we know why it has a mistake. Why, Rob? Because, because, that O makes the difference. We, Aramaic-speaking Christians, know why. Because it's an Aramaic word. The original in the Quran is an Aramaic word. It's not an Arabic word. Slutho in Aramaic means prayer. Sluth, slutho. <laughs> Guys, do you see why Arabic, Aramaic-speaking Christians like us are nuclear bomb for the Ummah? Slutho. Now you understand why the Quran contains that mistake. Or Muslims need to accept that Allah and Muhammad, the bunch of <laughs> illiterates, don't know how to write the correct way. This is the correct way, not <laughs> as the Quran writes it. Imagine if you go to an Arabic school, you take Arabic spelling exams, and you write it like the Quran, you will fail. Yeah, it's getting a little bit cold, you guys. I'm I'm putting on a sweater. Yeah, it's winter. What can we do? <sighs> All right. Slutho. Slutho is Aramaic. We know why the Quran contains these words. It's not an Arabic word. Do you see it? Guys, I hope you are enjoying this, man. We are dissecting the Quran word for word here. <laughs> oh boy. Guys, to prove to you, if you put, let's say, just to show you, right? This example. If you put the word in English here, the prayer in Google Translate, this is the correct way. Do you see it? The Quran doesn't write it like this. A salat. In the Quran, there's an O here. You see? The Aleph is missing and they added the O. Oh, do you see? This is the O here. But they read it as a salat. That's wrong. This is the correct way. No O, an L. Do you see the disaster, guys? So I only copied this word and I put it in a slide here for you. Right? This is the correct way. This is the correct way. Not as the Quran is showing it us. Else you have to read it a, a slot. A slot. A slot. A slot. So the Quran, if you have to if you disagree with me that it's not an Aramaic word, then you have to accept it. Accept the fact that Allah and his apostle, I mean Allah and Muhammad, do not know Arabic. The writer of the Quran was 
or in Arabic spelling. All right? You see the OE, guys? There you go. Now, guys, I want to play a short video clip to make things more interesting. There is an, another uh, amazing brother in Christ. His name is Gabriel Soma. He went on a live TV show with Brother Rashid, an ex-Muslim, a very famous ex-Muslim who became a Christian, and he has his own live TV show. I want you to play. Uh, I want to play the video. And I want you to focus to what is being said, guys. Okay. Let me change screens. I hope we can change screens. Yes, I think we can. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Mm. Just a second. Let me make it more interesting for you guys. I want everything to be fitting in the screen. Okay, I think this is good. All right. Yeah, this looks better. All right, let me play the video, guys. Focus. The Arab, the Muslims, when they came to the Middle East in the seventh century, they did everything to stop the الحضارات اللي كانت موجودة من جملة الحضارات السرية الحضارة السريانية الحضارة الفارسية لهلا لهلا بتركيا ممنوع تعلم سرياني لهلا بسوريا كان ممنوع تعليم السرياني إلا المدة الأخيرة نفس الشيء بالعراق فيك تعلم إنجليزي علم guys guys do you see how dangerous the Aramaic language is they don't allow to teach the Aramaic language because else you're going to bust Islam. They know it. Really? <laughs> اجوا العرب تمسوها والمشكلة انه العرب ما كان عندهم حضارة مم. عادة بفهم انا مثلا اذا اجت حضارة اقوى من حضارة تانية وتضغط عليها فيك تفهم هالشي ولكن انك تقضي على حضارة كانت موجودة كتب الطب كانت مكتوبة بالسرياني <تصفيق> remember Galen <تصفيق> we mentioned Galen uh, many times right guys I did a huge study regarding Galen Galen's books that were originally in Greek, they were translated by an Aramaic person, an Aramaic translator named Sergius of Rishina. He translated those books into Aramaic, the medical books. Do you see it? It's in front of you. This awesome guy, his name is Gabriel Soma, very, very famous person. He's, he even works for the uh, American government. He is uh, originally... Uh, 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 law, uh, he graduated in law, so he's even, uh, how do you call that someone? A lawyer, yeah, a lawyer. So uh, he, he even wrote books. He has a very famous book, and he dissected many words that we can find in the uh, Quran that are Aramaic, just like what I'm doing today, right? And he wrote a book about it. So the medical books were in Aramaic. Sergius of Rishina took his translated work of Galen to Jundishapur in Persia, and there was a Sahabi called uh, Al Harith ibn Qalda or Qallada, Tabib al Arab. He became the number one doctor, all right, in the Arab world. And he became later when he went to Mecca, that same doctor who graduated in Jundi Shapur uh, <laughs> because of the work of Galen. He went to Mecca and even married one of the aunts of Muhammad. And Muhammad was stealing the information, he was getting the information from Al Harith. Ibn Qallada, the Tabib al-Arab, the doctor of the Arab Ummah. Famous. Famous guy. He got it from Galen. Exactly. Kutub al-Lughat, Kutub al-Kimia, al-Jografia, Tari, Kilshi ka maktub al-Syriani, Ijo al-Arab, Tamasu, Unasabu al-Alun, 
بس هن ما عندهم اي حضاره اكزاكتلي exactly. لذلك اصبحوا العرب عرات بالنسبه لبقيه شعوب العالم لانه ما عندهم شيء they have nothing يتباهوا فيه hmm. الشغله well, الوحيده اللي هون الان بالدين الشغله اكزاكتلي exactly. hmm. مضبوط الشغله الوحيده اللي ما قدروا يتمسوها ما ما غيروا ما غيروا اسماء المدن hmm. وما غيروا اسماء الاشخاص مش بس السعوديه هي الوحيده اللي اسماء المدن فيها اراميه إذا طلعنا للدول المحيطة بالسعودية مثلا مثل الكويت ما معنى كلمة كويت بالعربي؟ وات از ذا مينينغ اوف كويت؟ ما لها معنى إذا ما عرفتها بالسرياني ما بتفهم شو معناها اتس ان كويت كويوتو بالسرياني كويوت من المكواية التي تكويك من الحر اه المناطق الحارة البلد الحار ما معنى كلمة قطر قطر بالعربي؟ This is, is, a, is a country بيت خطروية موجودة بال, بالليترتشر الأدب السرياني كثير بيت خطروية قطر هي ال, ال, المناطق اللي كان فيها عنف Violence. بالسرياني هذا هكذا تعني ما معنى بحرين بحرين guys في في سيستر فريدة فريدة ليكس هي from بحرين what does بحرين mean no. بالعربي ما لها معنى مرات أنا أقرأ بحرين يعني بح, بحر وبحر بحر وبحر تو سيز بحرين كلمة سريانية بيت حرين بيت نهرين بيت نهرين اكزاكتلي بيت نهرين جايز لوك ذيس از ارامييك وورد اسك سام شاموني كان تيل يو ماني ثينجز اباوت ات ات واز ان اريا جايز بيت نهرين ليترلي مينز ذا هاوس اوف ذا بليس بتوين تو ريفرز بيسكلي ريفرز رايت تو ريفرز سوري تو تو ريفرز بث نهرين وي هاف ايفن ا سيريك سونجز اباوت ارميك وورد سونجز اباوت بث نهرين سينا بث نهرين اتس اكشلي ذا كلتشرال سونج اوف ذا ارميك بيبل جايز بث نهرين اي كان بلاي ات ايفن فور يو اف يو لايك نو بروبلم اذا طبقنا نفس القاعده اللي طبقناها على بجيج و شلنا الياء والتاء من بيت بتصفي بحرين. امم بحرين هي المناطق يلي كان يصير فيها ديسبيوت يعني خلافات دائمه. نعم نزاعات. نزاعات دائمه. نعم. ما معنى كلمه دبي بالسريع بالعربي. جايز بيفور بيفور اي كونتينيو اي وونت يو تو ليسن تو ذيس. بيث نهرين ذات هي واز توكينج اباوت. لوك بيث نهرين. This is our number so- one song, basically. Let me go. Very old song. Look how old this is. It's a national song of the Aramaic people. Our song. <laughs> so you see, guys, uh, all everything, everything is Aramaic. Everything is Aramaic, right? Everything is Aramaic. Read كلمة سريانية بيت حرين. إذا طبقنا نفس القاعدة اللي طبقناها على بجيج وشلنا اليه والتاء من بيت بتصفي بحرين. Hmm. بحرين هي المناطق يلي كان يصير فيها ديسبيوت يعني خلافات دائمة نعم نزاعات نزاعات دائمة نعم ما معنى كلمة دبي بالسرية بالعربي What does Dubai mean? حرف الضاد دبي على كل حال اصباي بالسرياني معناتها المكان الجميل Beautiful place المشتهى The nice place كلمة شارقة كلمة سريانية معناها المضيئة شارقة يعني مشرقة مشرقة These are all cities and countries guys شو معنات عجمان بالعربي عجمان ما ألا معنى بالعربي Doesn't does have any meaning in Arabic It's one of the Emirates عجمان هي المناطق اللي فيها حزن Sadness ما معنى كلمة يمن يمن What does يمن mean بالعربي يمن كلمة أرامية تعني القوة هلا باليمن في مدينه اسمها 
حضرموت شو معنى حضرموت بالعربي؟ دائما كنت اسمعها ولا مره عرفتها حصار موت ما بنقول بالعربي حصيره؟ امم حصيره الاموات اها حس... حضرموت يعني حصرموت حصار موته رايت حصيره الاموات يعني مكان اللي يدفنوا فيه الاموات اللي يدفنوا فيه الاموات امم وي بيري يور ديد The land of the dead. مش بس اسامي المدن not only the city شايف نجران مثلا نجران نجرونو guys this, these are the people that came to debate Muhammad Muhammad uh, started to curse left and right right the cursing it became a cursing uh, party bring your uh, wives bring your children and so on the people of Najran right Najran Najrono Najran Najrono the Christians of Najran Negrono Negrono Najran هي ال 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 البقعة الممتدة الطويلة نجرونو موجودة بال بالبايبل وموجودة بالتلمود الارامي نعم تلمود اذا هي هذه هذه الاسماء كلها تدل سواء اسماء المدن السعودية الان او اسماء البلدان في الخليج كلها لها دلالات سريانية حتى حتى المدن والقرى والضيعة الموجودة بالكويت وبالخليج لهلا اسماء سريانية سي جايز What is not Aramaic, right? What is not Aramaic? All the lands, right? All the lands surrounding the two main rivers, right? The Euphrates, and what was the name of the other river? According to Muhammad, those two rivers uh, go uh, to Jannah, right? They, they, uh, the source comes from Jannah. Uh, the Euphrates, and what was I forgot. What was the second name? Mm. I forgot the name. Sorry, guys. The Euphrates and f- the Furat. Euphrates. Oh, yeah, Tigris. The Tigris. Tigris and uh, the Euphrates, right? Sorry if I got sh- I'm butchering the names, but yeah. All these countries, all that land are Aramaic lands, right? Euphrates, yeah, Euphrates. That's the way how to write it. Yes, feel very sorry for that. All right, guys. What about the word "summit"? This is a really damaging one. The word "summit," "summit," in chapter 112, Surah Al-Ikhlas, 112. Right? "Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu summit." We we explain many times, too many times actually, that this ayah is a disaster. Is empty. What is Allah saying? And what is the, the, the writer of the Quran saying? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ What does that mean? Nothing. It's empty. The meaning is empty. Why? There is a word missing here in the end. Because this one says, Say, Allah, He is one of. One of what? What is Allah trying to say here? One of what, man? Finish your sentence. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ أَحَدْ what? One of what? If you put here, guys, Alihad, meaning Allah is one of the many gods. And I think, guys, Muslims much later, he re- they removed. They removed here a word. There's a word missing. Else you will get shirk. Allah is one of the many gods. And maybe Allah was a donkey. I don't know. Right? I don't know. The writer of the Quran does not finish his sentence anyway let us go to the one that i want to talk about allahu samad allahu samad any muhammadan guys let me open skype maybe muslims want to call in what do you think let's see if we have missed calls oh no no missed calls oh wow no missed calls Allahu Samad. This word, Samad, is an Aramaic word. This word here, let me copy it. It's an Aramaic word. Muslims don't know the meaning and they will give you tons of, tons of tafsir, tons of explanations for one word. This is not the correct meaning because Muslims disagree. Some tafsir, some explanations for the Quran say it's a stone that cannot get dust It's a very smooth stone. Other translations will give us this one. But also 
solid, not hollow. It says Allah is a stone. Allah is a stone idol. The word, as I explained, the word samad in chapter 112, ayah 2, chapter 112, ayah 2, is not an Arabic word. This is why Muslims cannot agree on the meaning. They will give you tons and tons of explanations for it. Muslim scholars do not agree on the meaning. And they give tons of explanations for the word samad. Simply because it was never an Arabic word. Yet the original Aramaic Syriac word is smode, smode, samad, mas smode, smode, meaning saving. A place where you save money. A place where you save your money. Smode. I believe, guys, the original word, the original idol, is an idol, name of the idols. It was an idol that will good give you fortune, a god of fortune, a stone idol, a god of fortune. One of the idols of the Quraysh. What? Since Muslims stole that and put it in Quran in chapter 112, ayah 2, Allah is Samad, they proving that Allah is god of fortune. Yes, exactly, Mr. Abdul. Allah is a piggy bank. Exactly. Allah is a piggy bank where you save your money in. It was one of the idols of the Quraysh. Rob, can you prove that? Yes, I can. Yes, I will. But I want to have a Muslim first. <laughs> is there a Muslim, guys, who wants to call me? Refute me, maybe? You know what, guys? Let us have a nice drinking break. Small break. I'll be right back. Uh, I need to grab myself something to drink. Be right back. Don't go. Stay. I'll be right back in within two minutes. Please, guys. I need a break. Be right back. Commercial. Commercial break! Hello babies! If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support www.patreon.com slash Rob Christian We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video Oh and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe You know it's free habibis, don't be tight like Muhammad Commercial break! Hello babies! If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support www.patreon.com slash Rob Christian We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video Oh and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe You know Yeah, we want to thank uh Sheikh Umut for the commercial break. Yeah, that's what uh, uh, Sheikh Umut guys. That's his voice. <laughs> that commercial break. He created that for me, and he used his own voice. <laughs> Beautiful. Huh? Get yourself some popcorn and Pepsi, brother. Let us continue, brah. 
Guys, is my sound okay? I hope my sound is still okay. Sometimes when I, uh, you know, come back, uh, I, I forgot to unmute myself. It can happen. <laughs> All right, sound is okay. Let us continue. Guys, are you ready? Any Mohammedan? I, I, there's no Muslim to be found who wants to call me live on air? A sheikh, maybe, if I'm lucky, uh, or maybe an ustaz? Sound check! <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're good to go, guys. So again, the word samad in chapter 112, ayah 2, and guys, for the people who do not know, surat, surat al-ikhlas, chapter 112, is one of the most important chapters of the Quran. Yet, we have to conclude that the stone idol, the original, Samad, God of fortune, was an idol of the Quraysh. And Muslims, much later, the writers of the Quran, they put it in the Quran, stole it and put it in the Quran. Raw prove it. Okay, no, no problem. This is Ibn Kathir, guys. Ibn Kathir. Tafsir al-Quran, the explanation of the Quran. Al-Azim. Al-Jiz al-Thani, volume 2, by uh, the publishing company Kitab Inc. Kitab Inc. Ibn Kathir, Tafsir. Here is my uh, translation for the cover. The book is called Tafsir Ibn Kathir. You know Tafsir Ibn Kathir, right, guys? It's always in a book form. You have the online, or, you know, which they put online. But all of them are in books. Volume 2, a Jiz Athani. Yeah, they are, of course they are running from me because I'm going to bust all of their lies. Sure, why not? We have proof from even from their books that Samad is the idol of the Quraysh. Tafsir ibn Kathir. If we go to Tafsir ibn Kathir, guys. Here is Tafsir ibn Kathir. Here is the cover. I gave you the cover, right? If we go to the Tafsir, uh, we I take a screenshot, guys. Look, what does it say here? According to the Kuffar of Quraysh, according to the disbelievers of the tribe of Muhammad, the Quraysh, that there was one of the idols, one of the idols, they used to worship idols. They used to worship idols. That's what he, the Arabic says. They used to worship idols. The Quraysh, the Arabs, also the Arabs of Yemen. Fasanam lahu samad. Same samad rob in the Quran? This word? Yes. Fasanam lahu samad. One of the idols was called Samad. And another one, Waakhar Yukala lahu Samud. Samad. Samud. That was the second one. And the last one, Waakhar Yukala lahu al hiba. Uh oh. Three idols. First one was Samad. Another one was called Samud. And the third one was Al Heba. Uh oh. This is Tafsir ibn Kathir. Can you show us an online version? Yes, sure. Here is an online version, guys. Let me give you the link. Look, same story. Even the online versions of Ibn Kathir. Here. According to the Kuffar of Quraysh. And it says here that وَقَدْ ذَكَرَ Muhammad بِنْ إِسْحَاقِ Muhammad ibn Ishaq mentioned and other likes him mentioned that they used to إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَعْبَدُونَ أَصْنَامًا The people of Quraysh, the Arabs of Yemen and the people of Quraysh, they used to worship idols. فَصَنَمْ يُقَالَ لَهُ سَمَدْ Guys, same word, Samad. In the Quran, Samad. Oh, sorry for wrong ayah. Samad. Allahu Samad. Samad. This is Tafsir ibn Kathir, Rob. Yes. I gave you the link. Let me give you the link again. Fasanam yuqala lahu Samad. Here's the word. And another one was called Wa'akhir yuqala lahu Samud. Look how many idols, guys. Wa'akhir yuqala lahu al hiba Uh-oh. One of the idols was Samad Rab of the Quraysh and the people of Yemen? Yes. 
Do you see how they stole the same word and put it in Quran? One of the idols. And I showed you guys what the meaning is. It means a God of fortune. Small day where you place your money in. You save your money in. So if Muslims claim, today is Muslims claim that that's Allah. Well, then you have to accept that Allah was one of the stone idols of the Quraysh. No, it's not buffering. It's from your end. You have to refresh if you have problems. It's from your end. This is brilliant or not. Even Ibn Kathir confirms that one of the idols was called Samad. Yes. This is Ibn Kathir. The third is al hiba The third is al hiba Again, the first one, فَصَنَمْ يُقَالَ لَهُ Samad, The same Samad in the Quran. Muslims claim that's Allah. Well, then you have to accept that Allah, according to Ibn Kathir, is one of the idols. وَآخِرْ يُقَالَ لَهُ Samud, Samad, Samud. And the third one is Al-Hiba. Again, let me type it out in the chat. The three idols that are mentioned here are Samad, Samud, and Al-Hiba. Muslims, since you claim in your Quran that Allah is a Samad, you have to accept that Allah is one of the idols of the Quraysh in Yemen. Rob, maybe this website is lying. Here's another one. Let me give you the link. Rob, you have to be kidding. Muslims are putting this online from Ibn Kathir? Yes. Here. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Let me make it bigger. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. For chapter 7, ayah 70. Surah Al-A'raf is chapter 7, ayah 70. Tafsir Ibn Kathir, Rab, yes. Again. Taqawl al-Kuffar min Quraysh. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Taqawl al-Kuffar min Quraysh. According to the Kuffar of Quraysh. Waqad dhakara Muhammad ibn Ishaq. Wa ghayrahu. Innahum kanu ya'abadun asnaman. They used to worship idols, the Quraysh. فَصَنَمْ يُقَالَ لَهُ سَمَاد Ding, 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 ding. Oh boy. Samad is an idol? Yes. وَآخِرْ يُقَالَ لَهُ سَمُود Samad. Samud. And the last one in mentioned is Al-Hiba. Let me copy this part, guys. So you can benefit from it. Fasanam yuqala lahu samad. Fasanam yuqala lahu samad. And uh, samud and al hiba. This part here. Copy, paste. Bam! Samad, samad, samad. Ya ibn al samad. Ya ibn al samad. Ya Abedin Asnam, Ya Abedin Asamad, you worshippers of the idol called Samad. Muslims are nothing but pagans, and Ibn Kathir just destroyed the Ummah. Ibn Kathir just destroyed the Ummah, guys. Ibn Kathir just destroyed the Ummah, guys. Ibn Kathir. This is Ibn Kathir. I challenge any Muslim to say Ibn Kathir is a liar and a deceiver. I challenge any Muslim to say that Ibn Kathir is a liar and a seer. فَصَنَمْ يُقَالَ لَهُ الصَّمَدْ وَآخِرِ يُقَالَ لَهُ الصَّمُودْ وَآخِرِ يُقَالَ لَهُ الْهِبَى BAM! And we showed you guys, it's an Aramaic word. It's an Aramaic name of one of the idols. A god of fortune. A god, an idol of fortune. If you want to, you know, you're poor and you want you want to pray to that idol. That was one of the idols, Samad. Any Mohammedan guys? I already wrote it again. Samad, Samud, and El Hiba. Samad, Samud. And Al Hiba, those are the three idols mentioned in Ibn Kathir. For Ibn Kathir, again, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir's tafsir for 
Chapter 7, Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 70. Ibn, Th- Ibn Kathir's Tafsir for Chapter 7, Ayah 70. All right? He explains what that Samad is. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Why Muslims don't dare to call me? Yalla ya Muslimin. Yalla ya Khwan. Yalla ya Ukhta. Maybe there's a woman who is more man than uh, the men who, then, who do not dare to call me. We had around 300 people watching. And I'm sure Muslims are watching. Guys, I mentioned earlier, there was a Muslim lady who called yesterday on CP's live show. She mentioned my name. She said, I was watching to the live stream of Rob Christian and he was talking about the three questions of the Meccans that they got from the Jews. And Muhammad could not answer the questions. He failed. Muhammad said, I forgot to say inshallah. <laughs> and uh, he told them, come back tomorrow. But because he forgot to say inshallah, they w- had to wait 15 days. Muhammad needed to Google the questions. <laughs> Muhammad ne- needed to buy some time. And after 15 days, he still could not deliver. Muhammad still failed, he still failed to answer the questions. And the poor lady, she went on Christian Prince and she said, you know, I was watching Rob Christian, uh, his live stream, and uh, she got shocked. She never seen this before. Yeah. Someone actually sent me the link. Uh, let's see if we... Uh, a very interesting conversation, actually, between CP and uh, that poor lady. It's, I think it's an older uh, lady, a Muslima, and she's about uh, to leave Islam, guys. She is about to leave Islam. Uh, yeah. Let me put it for you guys. This is my patron, and this awesome guy. Oh, I have to log in here. Oh. All right, let me make it this. Uh, let me make it this, guys. I, you see, when you go to my Patreon, you see here. Uh, I always provide the live streams there of today. This is today's live stream, last live stream, guys. Look, this is the link to uh, the conversation between that lady and Christian Prince, and she mentioned me. I don't know what the time stamp is, but let's see. If I can put it here. This is the live stream that happened yesterday. Uh, Just a second. Yeah. I'm not sure what the time period is. She's calling in and she's mentioning me. So surprised, especially with that hadith that said that, um, like, uh, you have to do sins. Otherwise, uh, God is just, uh, God is uh, telling that. You know, she should, they should they don't like support you to open like a business, but enough just and all that. But uh, and never point came into my mind. Some some questions I had, especially of Surah Kahf, where okay, they asked uh, Muhammad about the questions about uh, three questions and and that he had to answer, but he he couldn't answer of the one question about the ruh and the other yeah. questions that he answered was actually already exist like oh, everybody knows about the seven sleepers and, uh, seven and sleepers. about Zulkarnain. and so what was the point of giving that answers again to the people who already knew that and um, what, but he did not give a correct answer. answer anyway I mean about Zulkarnain, he, he took a story written by an Assyrian, Assyrian author about and, a guy and, he have two horn I mean Zulkarnain, he became I mean who is this Zulkarnain? have you ever heard of a guy his name is that guy with the two horn is he a man <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I didn't know about it before when I heard Robert Christian the detail. <laughs> she calls me Robert Christian. Do you hear it, guys? I'm Robert Christian. But yeah, she's she was watching my live show the other day, two days ago. Robert Christian. I didn't know about it before when I heard Robert Christian the detail. Robert Christian. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, she, she, she was watching my live show and she, then she decided to call Christian Prince regarding this matter. And who is this Kornain? Have you ever heard of a guy? His name is that guy with the two horn. Is he a man? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know about it before when I heard Robert Christian the detail about this. Yeah. And I was actually curious. I was <laughs> Robert I, that Christian, yeah. So the poor lady is one of my viewers. Yeah, and she was she never heard of this before. 
So she's about to leave Islam. Uh, so if you interested to watch that, you can go to Christian Prince's uh, live stream. But I, I was shocked, man. I was like, you see, guys, you see how important it is to spread our videos? Muslims don't only watch Christian Prince. They watch my videos, too. <laughs> right? Not every topic our brother, our, our, the living legend himself, Christian Prince, can cover. Right? But the things that he does not talk about, you can find them on our live shows and streams and videos. So uh, amazing, man. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Is there any Mohammedan guys? Come on. I want to have a conversation with a Muslim, man. Robert Christian. Yeah, she called me Robert Christian. I said, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Rob, Robert Christian. Okay. Yeah, and uh, guys, on that very live stream, on that very live stream, Sister Rosemary, Sister Rosemary left Islam. Uh, she was watching my live show for at least one week. And after the disaster, over and over, me showing it on the screen and talking about it, there was no other option for her than to leave Islam. Pray for these people, man. We have hopes for any Muslim. Right? We have hope for any Muslim. Yalla ya muslimin, where are the callers? We have more than 300 people watching. There are at least, at least 10 Muslims watching. At least. Why are you not calling? I mean, maybe you can convince us why we should uh, follow Muhammad. Why we should, uh, we should uh, recite the Shahada. Call me. Defend your prophet, man. Def defend your idol, Allah. One of, the, one of the idols of the Quraysh. Are we lying? No, everything is on the screen. One of the idols of Mecca was summoned. Muslims later took it. The writer of the Quran took it and called Allah the Samad. Since the idol of the Quraysh was Samad, and Allah is that Samad, one plus one, Allah, is an idol. A stone idol. Right? The idol of the Quraysh. The idol of the Quraysh. Yalla ya muslimin. Robert Christian. <laughs> Robert Christian. Call Robert Christian, guys. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should do a live show soon with our uh, brethren in Indonesia. Uh, they've asked me many times, and I really sometimes I really don't have time, man. I'm too busy to do live shows with many people. I still need to do a live show with our brother uh, from Sira International, brother uh, Al Fadi. I still have to do a live show with Sam Shamoun. <laughs> man, when can I deliver again, man? It's crazy. Many people are inviting me, but I really don't have time. When I have time, I can do my own live shows, right? I go, when I can, I, go, I will go live, but I can't schedule it ahead. It's too much. Too busy, man. Please, guys, keep me your prayers. I really want to deliver. I, I really want to, uh, you know, answer the invitations, but it's really busy lately, guys. But I really have to, I have to, you know, keep my promise. Keep us in your prayers, guys, so that we can do many, many beautiful, epic live shows in the future with our burden, that I can have more time. And uh, please pray for me that I can do this full time. When I can do this full time, guys, I can do many live shows, more than one live show a week. Now, I'm lucky if I can do a live show once a week. I really, I really want to do this full time, guys. If you want to support our small ministry, you can do that on Patreon. Right? Even if it's two dollars, every dollar helps. And I'm sure, I'm sure we can reach that goal. Right? I hope, I really hope. Uh, it's it's my, one of my wishes to do this live 
every every day a live show. Why not? But I hope we'll see what the future will bring us. God bless you guys. Is there any caller? Maybe there are Christians who wants to call in. Maybe you have questions regarding today's live show. What do you think, guys? Is there a Christian who wants to ask a question? Maybe there is a Christian who wants to ask a question. Someone is saying your knowledge greatly helps the Christian community to unveil the conception and the birth of the lie which is called Islam. Well, guys, I, I appreciate it. I'm only here to serve and I'm using my uh, language skills because Arabic and Aramaic are my mother tongue. And thanks to the Lord, thanks to the Lord, we can use this for, for our benefit. Again, you don't need me, guys. I'm your humble servant. But if it's the plan of God to use us to uncover the secrets, the true face of Islam, then so be it. And I hope many Muslims will leave Islam because of our live streams. Keep them in your prayers, guys. Three Muslims left Islam just in one week. Can you imagine? Three Muslims on our live stream left Islam. Sister Rosemary, she became a Christian. Uh, our brother Abdul Rahman. And uh, another guy called Muslim, Muslim. Right? And Muslims will say, these people are not, are not Muslims. They were never Muslims. They are actors. You pay them. Yeah, I, I have a lot of money, guys. You don't know? I'm filthy rich, like uh, Zakir Naik, who has 20 millions on his uh, bank account in Malaysia. I'm as filthy rich as HM. You know, this is why I sit in my chair uh, for many hours, and I break my back for... Uh, any, everybody, I'm filthy rich, man. I have millions and millions. You don't know, right? I pay actors to act like Muslims uh, who call in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother, it's the truth. And you, you know, the Mossad are hiring me, guys. Rob, they are not Muslims. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Uh, deluded Muslims, man. You are deluded Muslims. Keep living in the matrix. Yeah. Uh, Happy Camper uh, says, Rob, will you talk about the future of Islam and what you expect to happen with apostasy rates? Well, actually, Islam is dying. Islam is dying. Just in Africa. So, uh, hello, my friend. Just a second, brother. Just a second. Uh, let me finish uh, my answer. Uh, only in Africa, guys. According to a Jazeera TV show, TV news, newspaper, more than 6 million Muslims only in Africa are leaving Islam every year. More than 60, more than 6 million Muslims in Africa leave Islam on yearly basis. On yearly basis, 6 million. What about the rest of the Muslim country? What about Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, so even Saudi Arabia? And so on. Even Egypt. Many Muslims are leaving. Welcome, uh, brother Ad Adrian Dico. Sorry for that. Welcome. Your life on air. Go ahead, brother. Uh, hello, dear brother of Christian. Hello. Hello, my God friend. God bless. bless you. Nice to see you. Go ahead. God bless you all. God bless you. Uh, you know, I, I, I call it just to uh, um, to see to say again that I'm very amazed by this uh, uh, session, include the, especially the Samad thing. Mm -hmm. It is a nuclear. And uh, to remind the audience, when first I heard about it, it was about uh, immediately after, I don't know, one week, two weeks mm -hmm. uh, after uh, Hijab and uh, Yasser Qadi killed the, one each other in that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we mentioned that in the beginning of the live show, right? And I, I, sh I showed everybody how how the Muslims uh, destroyed the Quran, actually, with their hands. Yeah, no original Quran of, of the 7th century, no complete original 7th century Uthmani Quran. And we showed everybody exactly uh, that even the Hafs Quran is in the wrong script. It should have been in the Hijazi script, but the Hafs version of the Quran is in the Kufi script. That's 1,674 kilom kilometers difference, a distance. Whereas the Hijazi original complete Quran of the 7th century of Uthman? Missing. It's gone. Poof. Exactly. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, and uh, why this uh, 
okay uh, all people here can see that this is a nuclear uh, nuclear bomb mm. but what it makes it more uh, devastating it is okay you presented into your show right it is your show we have i don't know 311 people but this is an easy story to remember and christians please yeah my friend just a second just a second there's an abdul in the live stream in the live chat he says I bet you Rob Christian doesn't know Aramaic. He only speaks Akkadian Assyrian. Are you an idiot or what? Are you an idiot or what? Uh, oh no, Suryoyo, oh no. What's wrong with you, man? Uh, uh, okay, uh, if you want, I drop down. Suryoyo, you idiot. Uh, what an idiot, go, man. Go. You see, the Muslims, they are so desperate. They say Rob Christian doesn't know Arabic. You don't know Arabic. And you don't know Aramaic. You're, you're a donkey yeah. son of a donkey. But Sit you down know, and shut your mouth, man. Desperate Abdul. Go ahead, my friend. Sorry. Okay. Uh, he can call. I, I drop down. I, I, I like to, to, to hear an Abdul c- c- coming up and to defend uh, this uh, nuclear. <laughs> 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 well, I just realized what I said. <laughs> to defend a nuclear. Man. Anyway, uh, uh, this is so easy. So easy to memorize. Uh, just make a little paper, of, uh, little paper, and uh, references. Remember it uh, when uh, to go to the to that site uh, Alro Seven and to present, but uh, from Arabic translation because in English uh, it doesn't say like that. <laughs> and, and and it doesn't and, say that RC. <laughs> I yes, love that. It doesn't one, say it? that. Yeah. But you know, it is like this. You destroy, you destroy Allah. You destroy Allah because he, he is not. Uh, and um, how say the domino pieces start to fall. Yeah, yeah. Allah, it is not. Then what this means that uh, Quran is not from Allah. Means that uh, Muhammad is a liar. Nope. Oops, oops, nope. oops. So that's it. Uh, thank you, brother. I will drop Thank down. you, my friend. Thank you for your call. God bless you. Thank you. God Amazing. You. And I invite any other uh, mod or any other Christian to. Uh, step in to ch- charge in and to say his uh, her um, opinion. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Bye bye. Rob, you don't know Aramaic. You don't speak Syriac. No, only, only Muslims. You know Arabic. Uh, we we are the original people. Who don't know, guys. I showed you so many slides, so many slides. Even the Quran is not an Arabic word. It's an Aramaic word, Qoryana, Qoryono, it means lectionary. It's nothing but a book that was in originally in the Aramaic language, written to confirm, it's a lectionary to confirm the true scripture, the holy Bible of the Jews and the Christians. Right? Nothing but a lectionary, the Aramaic Quran, to affirm Qoryana, Qoryono. That's the Aramaic word. Quran itself is not an uh, Arabic word. It's an Aramaic word, you idiots. And I gave you so many slides. These are my words, right, to explain to you. Shlomo, Salam, Aramaic. Shlomo, Pshaino. Yomo, a day, Yom. Ab, father, Abu in Aramaic. Abu in the Bishmaya, the Lord's Prayer. Ab, Baba, Babi, idiots. The word Tur in the Quran in chapter 23, ayah 20. Muslims don't know the meaning. They People like Ibn Kathir, people like At-Tabari, they had to go to us to decipher the meaning of Tur. Tur Abdin. We say, I as an Aramaic Syriac speaker, we say, Ahna min Tura Abdinna. We are from Tura Abdin. We are from the high mountains of Antioch. Tura Abdin. Ahna min Tura Abdinna. Rob, you don't know Aramaic Syriac. No, 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 you don't know. No, of course I don't know. Only because you are saying it, that's why, right? Bunch of idiots, you donkeys. Ya Jahil. We showed you Abu Bakr is a title. It means 
the uh, father of the first born bukro bakr first born idiots and we showed you that the quran contains aramaic like a salat the quran of today the hafs quran for example we showed you the mistake there this is an aramaic word else you have to accept as a muslim that allah doesn't know arabic hence your little <laughs> your illiterate prophet allah and his prophet are a bunch of illiterates this is not an arabic word if you write it like this you will fail your arabic exam but we know why it's it is written like this in the quran with an o you see the o here guys o it's a spelling mistake if you have to go by that argument because the true way to write the prayer is this way without the o with an l here a salat not a slot we know why there is this mistake why because it's not an arabic word it's an aramaic word slutho prayer in the aramaic slutho a sloth slutho slutho do you see why thank you very much we also showed you guys even chapter 4 i 157 it actually confirms the death and the crucifixion of jesus on the cross chapter 4 ayah 157 wa ma salabuhu wa ma qataluhu wa ma in aramaic wa ma in aramaic means what what they slew what they killed and what they crucified so it actually confirms take a screenshot wa ma confirms because it's not an arabic word wa ma wa mo right it actually confirms it does not contradict as the muslims have told us wama wamo is an aramaic word it means what what they killed and what they crucified bam chapter 4 ayah 157 is there any muhammadan like i showed you guys like like i explained to you earlier people like abu al aswad al duwali people like abu al aswad al duwali and ibn yusuf al hajjaj they played with the quran you know they when they int- started to introduce the dotting system the tanqid and and tashkil right the dotting system the large dotting system and the tashkil dhamma fatha kasra dhamma fatha kasra the vowels right they started to corrupt the quran even harder than before right and they even uh, wanted to kill ibn mas'ud one of the uh, the one who who memorized the quran ibn mas'ud they broke his hip and uh, al hajjaj ibn yusuf al hajjaj he said uh, you know uh, let me uh, change the quran and remove things that i don't like and he even said only my version is the valid one and even his version was burned it doesn't exist anymore that ibn yusuf al hajjaj where is his quran poof gone missing burned like uthman burned the original manuscripts of the quran and we are only left with we are only left with the number one popular quran version the hafs version the liar and deceiver and thief hafs but his version is in the kufi script from kufa which is 1674 kilometers distance between kufa iraq and mecca supposedly uthman said to zaid ibn thabit rewrite hafza her version that was on her pillow rewrite it in the qurayshi dialect it should have been in the hijazi script where is that hijazi script where is the quran of uthman from the 7th century in the hijazi script because today's hafs version is in the kufi script from kufa 
Bam! Where is the Hafs Quran? The original one does not exist. We only have the 1924 Al-Azhar University version. This is damaging, man. Yeah, thank you for confirming Novea River. You see it? Exactly. Abu Bakr is a title. Abu Bakr is a title. Bukro, Abu Bakr, the father of the firstborn. Abu Bakr, Bukro. Even if I put Bakr here, you see it? The word Bakr, you'll get firstborn. Rob, prove it. Sure, why not? If we go to Google Translate, you have a very beautiful uh, option, guys. You can use here, if you change it to Arabic to English, you get automatically an Arabic keyboard. I put in Becker, B, K, R. It says here Becker, right? It says here Becker. Becker. I get Becker. But what does the word Becker mean? What does Becker mean? It means firstborn. Firstborn. Look. Do you see it? Firstborn. Becker. Firstborn. Firstborn. So Abu Bakr is a title. It's not actually a name. It's a title. It means the father, Abu, father of the firstborn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So even the names of the cal caliphs are, do have meanings. They do have meanings. Aramaic, Bukro. Is there any Mohammedan guys? Come on. More than 300 people watching and no Muslim dares to call me? Why is that? Guys, there was a Mohammedan. Let me open this court again. Before I went live, I was having a conversation with the Mohammedan. He said, Rob, I said to him, you know, call me live on air. I'm going to go live in minutes. Call me. Oh, someone is inviting me to another <laughs> Discord server. Uh, guys, for the people who don't know, uh, I've been invited earlier uh, to go on Adam Seekers' uh, Discord server. Uh, I am, I'm there. If you want to find me, I'm there. And our admins are there. Admins, can you provide the link? Uh, can you give the invite link to Adam Seeker? I'm there, and I'm also on uh, Brother Jai's server. Brother Jai has also a server. All right. You can go there, too. I don't talk much, to be honest with you. I don't talk much on, on uh, Discord. But so now and then, I'll answer questions if I have the time. All right. Soko Films has also uh, a server. I'm not sure. I have no idea how to get the invite link. So I, I have no idea how that works. Maybe, maybe the admins can uh, provide the link. I have no idea how to get those invite links. I don't know who, how, 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 to, how it works, guys. But I had a conversation with a Muslim, okay? Let's see if I can go there. Uh, okay. Yeah, I just joined uh, Ben Yusuf's uh, server. Uh, what have What happened to that conversation? Just a second, guys. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, let me put it here on the screen for you guys. But I need to make the screen bigger. Let me go to my settings. 
make everything as big as possible for you guys. Yeah, it just blew up. <laughs> okay, this may be too big. Is this maybe too big? Yeah, I think it's just just too big. Oh. oh man, it's too big it's like this. Okay, I need to make it a little bit smaller. You see how much I know about uh, this, guys? <laughs> okay, let's see. Is this is no, still too big. Appearance. Change this one to 150, maybe. Okay, is this readable, guys? People in the live chat, is this readable for you? I was talking to this guy, Karim. Karim is a, a little scared puppy. Uh, right? Karim is a little scared puppy, and he claims that he is having exams. And uh, he doesn't dare to call me, so he comes with all kinds of excuses. And we were talking about Muhammad, the pagan, his prophet. And I told him, if you, care, if you call me, uh, if you call me, I'm going to prove to you that Muhammad was a mushrik. He said, are you going to call me? I said, I called him coward. He said, are you going to call me? He said, no. He provided a reference here in this, in, in, on Discord. He said, no, call me. And I'm going to make you famous. Look, here's the thing. He said, yeah, my, my wife and the baby just came home, guys. Sorry for the background noise. If you hear my baby, they just come home. Uh, he said, uh, Muhammad, he said, Muhammad, and I quote, Muhammad never kneeled before the idols and believed there's only one God. I said, are you sure? <laughs> and I said, you said, Karim, Muhammad never kneeled before the idols and believed that there's only one God. I said, boy, I'm going to surprise you. That's my response. I'm going to surprise you if you call in that Muhammad actually did kneel and worship the idols of Mecca. And I have multiple sahih hadiths confirming that. So if you call, call in, I'm going to show you. And I said, if you are not a liar, you can have at least a 5-10 minute break to, to defend Islam. I mean, what is more important, your exams or your prophet? He said, sure, I'd love to see some sahih hadith. I said, then call in. He says, no, no, show. <laughs> so this little coward is laughing. He said, no, show me the hadiths here in text. Uh, I said, you're a coward. So you're a coward. You don't dare to call me. You need to lie. You, you have no exams. You're a liar. You're only giving me excuses. You're a waste of time. And he continued uh, crying. He says, coward, um, you're going to show me the hadiths? No, I'm not going to show you the hadith if you don't call, call me. I'm going to show you them if you dare to call me. I know you're watching. He said, I said to him, here's Rob Christian again, me. I said, I will show you life on air, pinky promise, at Karim. He said, is the video saved after the live? So you see the tactics, guys? He doesn't dare to call me, but he said, I'm, uh, are you going to keep the live stream online? Of course. Have you ever seen me delete a live show, you idiot? Then I said to him, don't tell me you cannot have a 10-minute break to call in. And he continues crying and running from me. And I said, I don't respect text only Mohammedans. That's what I said. Who need to come with all kinds of excuses. And he says, what does text only mean? You idiot. I, I need to explain to him what text only means. And then I said to him, I will make you famous, Ya Karim. I'm going to make you famous. You might become the hero of the Ummah, of the Islamic Ummah, if you call in. And he continues tap dancing and come out with kind of, what is text only? You are a text only jihadi boy. That's what you are. And then I said, maybe if you are too coward, you can ask your dad or your big brother to call me. Maybe your mother, who is the real man of the house, maybe she can call me. And then he says, I truly cannot get into any calls right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have a 10-minute break to call in, right? And then some uh, sugar-coated Mohammedan, he said, Rob, please be, uh, uh, I mean a Christian, 
His name is Igor or Igor the the Vingineer. I think he's a Christian who is, uh, you know, he's falling for the taqiyah of the Muslims. He says, Ra, please be respectful. I think he's a far different Muslim than any other that you have met for sure. And then I said, at Igor, uh, this idiot, this wannabe Christian, I don't know who he is. He said, I said to him, that's what we thought too about our 40 plus year friendly Muslim neighbors that we ate and drank with in the Middle East. When ISIS came into power, they joined them, these so-called friendly neighbors of us in the Middle East, and started to paint the letter on, on our houses to ask ISIS to force jizya on us. And I said to this uh, idiot, wannabe Christian, I told him, you have no idea what you're talking about. How many Muslims do you know, Mr. Igor the Dove Engineer? See, even Christians don't know what they're talking about. How many, Muslim, how many Muslims have you lived with? Every Muslim is a potential jihadi boy. Been there, done that, and got myself the t-shirt. The moment Islam takes over a country, guys, the moment Muslims invade a Western country, they will all become jihadi boys. And they will enforce jizya on you. Or else, you don't want to convert to Islam or leave the country, they will kill you, and they will rape your women, i.e. your daughters and sisters and wives. And, you know, you know the standard thing, right? The poor Christians here in the West, deceived and infiltrated by the Muslims. Like this filthy son of Satan, this coward, Karim. Blah, 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 blah. Guys, look. He, he has supposedly, guys, he said, I have an exam that he must uh, prepare for. But he is writing a complete newspaper. Do you see it? He has time to write a complete newspaper. The proof is in front of you, this Karim. But he has no time to call me for five minutes. Bunch of cowardice, liars and deceivers. You know what? You have time. You have time to write a complete newspaper here on this court, but you don't have to time to call in for five minute conversation live on air. You Liar and deceiver, you have no honor and you have no shame. Uh, and by the way, <laughs> Smiley, what happened to your exam? <laughs> Rob, you're a savage. Rob, you're a savage. Yeah, I know. have an exam to prepare yeah but the guy is writing a newspaper look a huge newspaper blah 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 wrote it in five minute break guys immediately responded look then you sure have five minutes extra to call in right now I'm live still, coward. <laughs> the guy still is on Discord and he's supposedly studying for his exam. You liar, you deceiver. You have no honor, you have no shame, Ya Karim. I know you're, you're watching and listening. Let me give him again the, uh, the link. Let's see if he's going to call. My Skype is open. My Skype is open. Stop lying. Call in. You little coward. He's still writing a newspaper, guys. But in the meantime, he doesn't dare to call. Little girl. Papook! You see that pros uh, Protestant uh, believer brother, uh, Ed Van Halen? How are you, my friend? Nice to see you here. Weren't you an admin here? Let me make you admin again. Welcome, my friend. God bless you. Guys, for the people who do not know this brother here, 
a Protestant believer. Uh, his other nickname is Ed Van Halen. He is a brother, and he goes way back to the Paul Talk era, Paul Talk times. Uh, an uh, amazing brother here. Ed Van Halen, why don't you join often, man? We miss you here. Nice to see you, brother. Keep uh, being here, man. Give me some love like you are giving uh, our Sam Shimon, man. Yeah, a brother, Ed Van Halen, or another nickname for of his is Protestant Believer. He is one of the main admins on Sam Shimon, his live stream. Awesome, brother. Yeah, that's that's amazing to have you, bro. Uh, like the rest of the admins, keep all of our admins in your prayers, guys. Yeah, and uh, uh, brother, uh, Protestant believer, can you please provide the link? I don't know how it works. Can you provide the link to our servers here in the live chat, please? Maybe people, some people want to join, uh, download Discord, and join our channels. How does it work? I don't know how to invite people. How does this work here? One of our uh, servers is called Roasted Vegetables. Potato, brother. Yeah. How do I invite people? How does it work? Where can I get the invite link? Here, invite people and then... How does this work? I can only invite people, but how can I get the invite link? I don't know how it works, man. There is a way to uh, make an invite link, but I have no idea how that works. No idea. Uh, here you have multiple channels, guys. You see it? Under one server. You have the general chat where everybody is typing. See, some people even share, or I myself share the link. Brother here, XYZ, who also is in the live chat. He posted it earlier, too, on the, all the channels that we have access to. People are doing an amazing job on social media, guys. Christians, please don't get lazy. Please share our videos. Allow them to go viral. Come on, let us try to save those Muslims. We cannot save them, only God can, but we can help. Chat channel, right click, invite people. Okay, but where is the link? I don't know how to get the link. Edit link, generate a new link. Is that the way? Uh, copy. What if I put it here? What will happen? Ah, okay, guys, if you click on it, you can join this server. Awesome. Now I know how it works. So if you click on that, you can join. Okay, let me also, let's see if this is going to work too. Adam Seeker, his uh, server. I'm there too, guys. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's Adam Seeker's server. Perfect. You see Sister Dragon Daenerys is there, one of the admins. Yeah, I mean, you have many people, uh, awesome people. Brother Jai, Apologetics. Uh, Brother Chris Claus is there. Many amazing people, guys. Anyway, that's Discord for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I myself don't talk much there. You know, sorry guys, I have no time to always be there. But when I, when I can, I will talk to people, you know. Communicate with people there. Amazing brothers and sisters in Christ. All right. Any Muslim? Ah, okay. Andrew Martin also posted it. Perfect. Yeah, roast, roasted vegetables. That's where our brother of persistent believer is there, one of the admins. Just a second, guys. I just got a text message. Okay, let me respond. Sorry, guys, just bear with me. All right. Sorry for that. Any 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 caller, guys? Is there any Muslim? <sighs> any Muslim? Now, guys, we showed you, we showed you that according to Ibn Kathir, 
I want to talk about it. We showed you that Ibn Kathir for chapter 7, ayah 70, chapter 7, ayah 70, he's saying that one of the idols of the Quraysh was a Samad. Fasanam yuqala lahu Samad. Same Samad who Allah is in the Quran. Same Samad, Allahu Samad. Samad. Same Samad. And we showed you the online versions. Fasanam yuqala lahu Samad. According to Ibn Kathir's tafsir for chapter 7, ayah 70, one of the idols is the Samad. What did Muslims do, guys? They started to even corrupt Ibn Kathir. New publishing companies, the, the publishing companies, they started to corrupt and change. This new version, I think this is the 2007 version of Ibn Kathir, they republished, they re, re, always the re, published the Ibn Kathir, Tafsir. And they changed. Look, guys, how they corrupt. Look. So they changed. The Muslims changed Samad, the idol Samad, to what? To Sada. What is Sada? <laughs> they changed it to Sada, guys. Just to deceive the Muslims. You see it here. They changed Sama to Sada. <laughs> Filthy deceivers, man. Here in the Arabic, guys, a Christian noticed the change. And he said, you know, these liars, they are corrupting, you know, uh, uh, the publishing company, right? The publishing company, they changed and corrupted the original Ibn Kathir. But... There are even online versions. These are Muslim websites, guys. Let me give you the link. They did not change it because they have still the original Ibn Kathir. The uncorrupted Ibn Kathir. So they play even with Ibn Kathir. Yes, not only the Quran. I did a live show about it, guys. I did a live show. The very first time that I found out that they played with Ibn Kathir, corrupting Ibn Kathir to hide to hide the true meaning behind chapter 112, Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter 112, Ayah 2, Samad. All right? And we, you can still, guys, you, you can still buy, and I showed it you, to you early, you can still buy the original Ibn Kathir online. Look, online, on Google Play. Right? I have that book. The original, uncorrupted Ibn Kathir, volume 2. Here, I took a screenshot. And we have the online versions. Multiple online versions. The link. Let me give you this link too. Fasanam yuqala lahu samad. Here, samad. Samad. So they played and corrupted. And now new versions of Ibn Kathir. They have soda instead of samad. Why? Because they love to even corrupt their own books. Filthy liars and deceivers. But what can be seen on the internet cannot be unseen. It's game over. You can try to corrupt even Ibn Kathir. But everything is online these days. These are Muslim websites. SuraQuran.com Alruh7.net Ibn Kathir. Look guys. Tafsir Ibn Kathir, the original one. For chapter 7, ayah 70. Surat Al-Araf, ayah 70. You see, when it becomes too much damaging for Islam, that one of the idols, Fasanam yuqala lahu samad, of the Quraysh, look, كَقَوْلِ kufar min Quraysh. Fasanam yuqala lahu samad, and another one, وَأَخْرِ yuqala lahu samud, and... The last one, وَآخِرْ يُقَالَ لَوْ الْهِبَى So there were three idols. Three idols. The first one, Samad. Muslims took it and they put it in Quran. And I showed you guys that that Samad was an idol, a god of fortune. That the Quraysh used to worship to become rich. A god of fortune like the Greeks, guys. You know the Greeks and the Romans... They had gods. 
gods of fortune. The Arabs before Islam had also such gods. And one of them was called Samad. Samad. Uh, you know, and uh, the name, the Samad of the idol, has a meaning. Small day, Aramaic. Saving. God of fortune. You see how shameless this cult is? They even deceive, they even corrupt Ibn Kathir. Because Ibn Kathir was doing too much damage. So they corrupted Samad to Sada. Samad. Samad became... Sada, <laughs> filthy liars, man. Even corrupting Ibn Kathir. What, what else is new? What else is new? Yeah, and I created, the very first time I created a video about this, right guys? Remember when I did that live show? Man, man, oh man. Guys, we don't have any Muslim. Maybe it's good to wrap things up. What do you think, guys? Thank you for being here, guys. I want to do this for many hours, but we are already live for so many hours now. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your for being here. God bless you, guys. I think we had a lot of fun today. We did a lot of damage today, thanks to the Lord. Thank you for being here, guys. Thank you for your amazing support, for your financial support. Go with the peace of Christ. And you see Muslims... A bunch of cowards, they did not dare to call in today. Why? Well, my Skype is open from the very beginning. You see, no calls. Only a brother, Adrian Deku, one of the admins, called in. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Again, may our Lord and Savior, our living God, Jesus Christ, bless you and your loved ones. Keep the admins in your prayers. Keep us, the warriors, in your prayers, guys. Deus vult, Lord willing, we will see each other again very soon. Jesus is Lord. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And Muhammad is nothing but an invention, a fabrication. But if we have to go by the Muslim sources, we have to conclude that Muhammad was a pagan, a son of a pagan, a fraud prophet. Either way. Thank you for being here. Deus Vult. We will see each other very, very soon again. God bless you. Nice to have you. See you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. And don't forget to subscribe.